Hey guys, what's up? I'm Trisha Paytas on the Zach Sang Show, and we just recapped all of 2022 with the iconic moments of My Chemical Romance back on tour, Stranger Things 5, and the birth of my baby, Malibu Barbie. Enjoy. Hello, beautiful human. Thank you so much for clicking on our conversation with Trisha Paytas. Today's interview is delivered to you by GoPuff. GoPuff is changing the way we get things delivered. Thousands of items, from booze to snacks to home goods to electronics, all available in the palm of your hands. Delivered to your home, studio, or you on a street corner pretty much instantly. I'm telling you, GoPuff is the best out there, so why not try them out? And when you try them out, use my code. Save $10 off your first two orders. Zach10, use it when you're checking out. That is Zach10. You'll save 10 bucks off your first two orders. Okay? Okay. I appreciate you. Uh... Trisha Paytas in studio with the queen herself, Queen Malibu Barbie, right here, right now. Let's go. Are we going or no? I mean, yeah, we can okay. go. Okay, because like when, um, when I don't know if you got canceled, like what happened? You guys got canceled or what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about like, it. Okay, okay. Because I saw it was like off the air and I was like, no, what? And then you like came back like big and now you have like a researcher and like everything. I was like, wow, okay. Guess we didn't get canceled. Okay, Hello, sorry. beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's it. Yeah. Welcome back to the studio. A new mom, Trisha Paytas. Woo! I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> That's my outfit today. <laughs> I have that theme going. <laughs> it, is, it is totally giving and you are a yeah. cool mom. Thanks. And you, you roll... I mean, you roll with the crew that you rolled with the last time you were on the show as Gerard Way. Yes. You know, your husband. But there is a, <laughs> a, there's an additional right now. Yeah, now we have. Right now, forever, yeah. for the next at least 18 years. <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a little Malibu Barbie. But Gerard, you know, Gerard was the name for the male. We were going to name him Gerard Way Peta Sackman. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I swear. My husband was like, I kind of don't mind that name. I was like, really? So, yeah. What other options were on the table for, for girls? For girls? Uh, you know, Malibu was like the first like the one I like like Cookie and I like those kind of names and like I love but he didn't like those I like Cookie I liked Renezme from Twilight I thought that was so good um, yeah he wanted to name her Kate because he loves Kate Bush so he's like let's name her Kate. and that was before Stranger Things and stuff like that he like loves Kate Bush I was like mm, not Kate so Malibu Barbie was kind of it I've talked about her name for like literally like the past 10 years of my life I was like if I have a girl it's Malibu Barbie so yeah <laughs> has Barbie reached out to you no, I was actually scared they might like sue me. <laughs> they might be like, we don't want to be associated with you. <laughs> no, but I don't know if they can sue. I don't know if they can sue. I guess not. Well, I don't not know. sue. I thought at least they'd send you some merch. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> they definitely probably don't. They're probably like, oh, no. No, um, no. but that case, the case they sent me, it's not sponsored, but they did send me like Barbie cases. Now everybody who has like a Barbie collaboration, they like send me Barbie stuff, which is like okay. cool. It's great. Like, that, you know, you're getting something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, thought so. it, I thought it'd be like, you, you know, sometimes they do those promotions where brands like, hey, if you tattoo our logo, we'll give you a free X for life. Or, Wait, what? Really? Yeah, change your name to this <laughs> yeah. and I'll give you this. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. They can reach out, but I don't think they want to be associated with me. <laughs> <laughs> no brands do. I got I got dropped by so many brands last year. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I get canceled. You know, I'm always getting canceled. I'm trying not to get canceled now as a mom. I'm like, you know, people try and cancel me and like, I don't know, whatever. Do pe I mean... It's weird. I feel like you're also Teflon. Like, <laughs> what? okay, you're untouchable. <laughs> meaning, people attempt to do things, and then right. at the same time, you just keep going. Yeah. Well, I think you can only really truly cancel yourself. Like, I can be dropped by sponsors and stuff like that, but like, I can't. Like, no one can cancel a person. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. not gonna stop being you. Yeah. It's like you guys. Like, you get canceled, you come back. You know? It's just like, <laughs> oh, that's right. Let's go yeah. Back. yeah, I want to talk about it. <laughs> Because I was devastated. I was like, wait, what? How does this happen? What so, happened? Okay, so, the, I mean, you know, it's funny. We talked about it on and off very sporadically, and then we did something for the New York Times, and we talked about it. I talked about it, and you talked about it, too. Yeah, I talked about it a bit. You, you know, huh. and, and, and we, the last radio show was, a. It, it was really big. Like, we, honestly, and I think a lot of people didn't know this, at least from YouTube, the crossover was very limited, but... We had the largest nighttime pop radio show in North America, and we were on like 80 something, almost 90 different radio stations all over North America from like Toronto to Vancouver to, you know, Houston, Texas, uh, literally uh, all over America, mm -hmm. cities big and small, every single night for like 10 years. We were on the radio there. And the contract, the last contract we did was a seven year contract. Ugh. And it was really uh, long. Bad? That was not good? Well, That's... I mean, it definitely wasn't pro-us. And oh. I signed it so early on 
I mean, seven years is just a long time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, you can negotiate up or anything. You had the same flat rates, whatever. Oh, yeah. Whatever we decided on seven years ago is what was going to stick. And it wasn't a good deal. No, it, it was it was not. No. In it wasn't our call favor. her daddy numbers. You weren't getting like twenty million dollars. Hell no. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you guys got paid that much. Like I feel like radio shows. If you're number one, you get paid a lot. And but and, and you know to that point, we were number one in almost. Uh, let's just say like you, we're either like number one, two, or like top five at a minimum in every single market we were in, and it, it didn't necessarily matter because radio is not something that's on the come up it's actually on the come down obviously uh-huh. and we were doing something different digitally that the radio company couldn't keep up with or necessarily monetize properly because people like to, to call her daddy or joe rogan or whatever mm-hmm. you know they're digital only properties and when they they had a digital team around them to help them grow and flourish where we were both we were equal parts fm huge property and equal parts of digital property that was of decent size and stature that was constantly shaping culture right right and constantly helping create conversation around pop music that was being released in a way that like i I think very very few do and our company couldn't keep up with that they didn't know under understand not not only how to help us grow it and take it to the next step but also not even monetize what we were doing they told us to stop doing interviews at one point yeah what yeah Yeah. they didn't want us to be on youtube or doing the podcast (laughs) yeah so they're like no we don't want ariana grande or bts literally (laughs) not not a joke there were two very big a-list singers that they told us weren't relevant anymore and we shouldn't have them on the show yeah happened a bunch why? What was? Why was their logic behind it? Or they just didn't say? It. They're just like no. They just didn't understand they how didn't to make it. money from oh, it. Oh, that's yeah. And, and and they didn't. At the end of the day, they really didn't get it. And yeah. to work with them any more than we had already worked with them would just be a mistake. And like just being honest, like in the FM world, without having to bring in like another big radio group on top of all the stations we had collected, we had kind of reached the ceiling, especially mm-hmm. at nighttime radio. I mean. Delilah's done what Delilah's done. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, Delilah's Dilemma. She's, like, really soft-spoken, and oh. she's, like, on hot AC stations, mm-hmm. and she's been doing it forever, but she's been in that same role for, like, 30 years doing nothing on any other platform but radio. And, you know, she's just hit the ceiling and has stayed there. Yeah. I, I We hit the ceiling there, and... I, the, the thought of, like, staying complacent and not being able to grow what we do best, which is... You know, taking what we do in a radio studio, both in a reality radio show sense or in an interview sense, and take that to the masses via the, the internet properly, it just didn't, like, it didn't add up. Like, uh-huh. it, it just didn't, like, it just didn't, yeah, didn't compute to me. So, yeah, we couldn't come to terms on figuring out what would be next for us there. And because of that, we ended up leaving. But I had been meeting with Amazon for months before and a, oh, a wow. couple different radio groups. And, uh, we decided to go with Amazon and take oh a little God. bit of a risk. Yeah. Wait, why is that a risk? Is Amazon like the big, isn't Prime even bigger than anything right Huge. now? Huge. Prime yeah. just surpassed Netflix. But like, yeah. let's, let's call it what it is at the time. Like we, I didn't know that we were going to end up working for Amazon Music. I we, I joined Amazon solely for their radio service called Amp, which we're on, but we're also a part of the Amazon Music family and we have a larger mm. role there now yeah. and it's going to grow. I mean, we're moving you know, we're going to be moving studios eventually, hopefully. This is know. so nice, though. This is so big. Like, when you said this Thanks. isn't permanent, this is, like, really nice. This is, you know, Rick Dees, who is, like, yeah. an old radio guy. Yeah. This is his studio. I saw when I came in, I was like, oh, is he still on? Is he dead? Is he alive? <laughs> 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 I know Rick Dees. <laughs> the question is, like, is he alive? <laughs> is he? I mean, he's around, but is he, is he alive? <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> he shows up here. It could be his ghost now that you mentioned it. <laughs> right? <laughs> we love him. No, he's, like, iconic. Like, I don't even know him, but I know his name, so he's exactly. iconic. But you know what I mean? That's everything. (laughs) So did we get canceled? Not necessarily. Right. That ended up becoming a narrative because I didn't say anything. Mm. You know, it was really messed up, just being honest. And while we're having this moment of clarity, and I really appreciate you asking. Yeah. You know, it was when you're. You know, and, and I, I, one of the first questions, one of the questions I asked you during our first interview when you came to the studio, paying homage to Pamela Anderson on Howard Stern, <laughs> <Yeah>. which is <laughs> That's still, great. I love telling people about that <laughs> as it's just like really just so, such a great example of who you are as a student of culture and mm-hmm. a participator of helping shape it. But really as somebody just who respects, I, I think real recognizes real in a sense of like, You've given a lot to the internet, and I asked you, how do you see a camera? And, like, you know, asking a question like that made me reevaluate once my radio show went away, essentially, and I didn't necessarily know what I was going to do next. Like, 
my relationship with a microphone, like being in front of a microphone and having no friends 15 years ago. <laughs> and and that's the truth. Like when I started, I only started radio to make friends. Like right. I was, n- nobody would talk to me in school. I was very misunderstood. And like, I just couldn't connect with people. And it wasn't until I made a radio show from my bedroom that I found connection with anybody. So, you know, when that went away, I really did genuinely feel like I had lost every friend I've ever made because through that I made friends that were in real life, tangible friends, right. but also, you know, friends that are, I, I'd never see or know, but I would meet on the street or just, you know, what, whatever. Like I just knew they were there through the internet, through a chat room, through call-ins, whatever. Mm. So yeah, I did. I like, I had a very, I still do have an incredibly deep relationship with I, my assumption is what you have with a camera, I have with a microphone. Yeah. And to lose that, and to be in a place where I didn't necessarily, to your point of like, you know, you, you're not really canceled until you cancel yourself. Mm-hmm. But when your show goes away that you feel like is the connection point or the, the, the main line to every relationship you've ever made, I, I, it is an external force that is doing that. And yeah. I, I can't. It's hard to, to, you know, because it fell out of my control. You know what I mean? Right. You know, the internet only goes so far. To yeah. So did you know then right away you guys would come back or were you guys, oh, damn, this could be like the end of us? <laughs> oh, no. We knew we <laughs> no. were going to okay. go somewhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we just you didn't were... say anything. We let the internet kind of believe we were done, but we always knew something was in the way. Oh, because yeah. I totally thought that. I was like, yeah. wait, what happened? Like, it came out of nowhere, it seemed, too. So that's it, what I was like... Right. Thanks. Yeah. It, well, it was really weird. We were we had like <laughs> we had like Lisa from Blackpink on the show. We had a huge interview with Joshua Bassett. <laughs> like we had all these crazy big moments. <laughs> and then and just done. Like, yeah, we're not going to figure this out with you. That's crazy. But you know, that's like that's the problem with anything in Hollywood. Everything like people just don't get it. Like you said, like no one gets it. Mm-hmm. And that's like me too. Like I think I had like an agent for so long, and people just like didn't get me and stuff like that. And it's like you just have to make your own path because people just don't get it. Like especially old people, like they just don't understand. They're so like outdated. They don't really like to understand the power of like things you know what i mean like yes they do yeah. the, really the true impact of what internet means and what that means for media and personalities and connection and relationships i mean you're going viral this week because i, I saw memes of you attached to lana del rey album titles <laughs> did you see those memes yeah but i don't get it because i don't know anything about lana del rey <laughs> <laughs> and what's the S-Z-Z- S-Z-A? who's that SZA. SZA. yeah on tiktok too there's a viral clip of me dancing dressed as Nirmani to a SZA song and I have no idea what it means and it has like 20 million views right now but I don't I don't know those people like I don't know music that well like that so I don't know why what's the Lana Del Rey rap I didn't get it I saw it but I don't get it <laughs> I don't know I just think you, there. you perfectly <laughs> capture the mood of those song titles really maybe I should watch it watch her I don't know I don't know anything like about new music I'm so bad is it is it scary though because some of that reach right like you're talking about 20 million views on a video of you yeah. just dancing <laughs> yeah it's hard to monetize that or to turn that into tangible cash right yeah tiktok is like the worst i think that's like notorious like yeah. there's no money in tiktok really i mean i love tiktok though, but it's like the most relevancy so that's why i do it because it's like you know you get 20 million views on a tiktok and you're just like well that's crazy that's like more yeah. you know people that watch like tv and stuff like that so um yeah it's hard to ch- like get the money like you said for it but i think it's more just like relevancy and like selling product on there and stuff like that again i don't get mm-hmm. sponsorships or anything Thing, but to me it's just also fun i don't know do you need sponsorships to survive as a mom right now uh no i got only fans can i say that i'm like i don't know what i can <laughs> yeah, say you know, yeah. The fuck you yeah okay i didn't know really yeah okay, we're on the know. internet only now so you can see whatever oh that's inter- oh, okay i was gonna ask that so you guys are not on the radio you're on the internet which no, is so better we're like on, you said we're on amazon zam but then we're on amazon music okay so it's all and on youtube and you can't TikTok. like tune into it no but do you have a, a do you have like an amazon speak alexa at your house yeah of course yeah you just go like hey alexa uh, play Hello Beautiful Human on AMP or something. Or... Is that the... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Alexa, stop. <laughs> I'm beautiful. Oh, interesting. Well, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's cooler anyways. That's really cool. I didn't know. We're figuring it out. Are you guys called... Did you change the name? Is it the Beautiful Human Show? Or is no, it... it's Zach Sanchez. Oh, because so. <laughs> he said, like, Beautiful Human. No, I, like, I love that, though. <laughs> I think that'd be a great name for your show. <laughs> and why is it a Zach and Dan show? Why is it just Zach Sang show? I mean... <laughs> First, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been the Zach Sang show since day one, so it's just always been like it's that. It's like, yeah, like Howard Stern has Robin. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay, I get it. That makes sense. Yeah. I uh, want the Trisha Paytas show, too. Like, if I had a co, I'd want it to be the Trisha Paytas show. I would, well, I mean, you were on front of me. Is that your name wasn't on that. Right, exactly. You like, like the, I probably should have been Trisha Paytas show. But just kidding. <laughs> but but just that kidding. brand was really tangible. Have you thought about making, like, a, a comeback to audio or podcasting or video? Because I've been thinking about, like, hitting you up and pitching you a show. Really? Yeah. I do like have a mom I, show. 
Oh, well, that would be amazing. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. I Because I'm supposed to see Colleen next. Do you know Colleen Ballinger? Yeah. yeah I'm supposed to see. Because we went to her first, her uh, twins' birthday party, and I'm supposed to see her next week, and we're doing like a mom mukbang. And I was like, it would be fun to do. Oh, the little music playing? Wait. Do we not like the ambience? No, it's oh, like... beautiful. Alexa, Is that me? Oh, Alexa, Alexa, can you please stop playing music? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it was like me playing it or... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, okay, because we've seen a big transition of influencers who are able to monetize being a parent differently. Like Nash Greer makes hella money being a dad. Do you remember Nash Greer's a dad? Yes. two kids now, I think. No. Yes. That Vine guy? Yes. No way. How old is he? He has to be like 20. Yeah, he's young. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, that's everything. I wish I was a young parent. That's my regret, but that's cool. What? what? You're a hot mom. Oh my God, I'm 34. I'm about to be 30. I have to like get it cranking. Like we're trying for number two. We got to get it going because I need like three or four kids and I'm getting, I'm getting older. Wait, so are you, you're trying actively for number two? Yeah. They call it geriatric pregnancy when you're like 34 years old. Like if you're past 34, you're a geriatric. Like literally, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like the old mom. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Have we given any thought to like trying to change the brand to be more mom focused so then you grab other deals or not? I mean, I would love that, but I just feel like I feel like like I can't. Like right because I'm promoting yeah. like dildos and only fans. Like I feel like I can't. I would like that. You know, because obviously I'm a mom and I want to be mom content, but I don't know. I wish there was like a balance. I don't know. Has be like it had to have changed the way you look at life every day. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, definitely that. It's weird. Like, I'm definitely the same. Like, I definitely still, like, you know, love to cosplay and stuff like that. But it does change everything where, like, things just don't matter. And I know people just say that, whatever. But, like, nothing really matters. Like, people talk about me or whatever. And it's, like, it doesn't matter, like, what people say anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't bother me. I don't know. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is that and just, um, yeah. I mean, I'm still myself. I feel like the best thing is just, like, be myself for her because I want her to be, like, her own self and stuff like that. But but at the same time, like, in the same breath, like, yeah, I got to, like, watch what I do a little better. Like, I don't want to ever cause, like, drama or beef or anything that could, like, put a bad light on her. You know what I mean? So, How does it feel to have something that <laughs> is more important than you? You know what? It's... It's the best. It's also the scariest feeling because I think you just don't want to mess up. Like, I just don't want to mess her up. Like, I feel like... I was kind of messed up as like a child, you know, hence why I like, you know, am the way I am or was the way I was. And I think it's just more like, yeah, not having, um, not wanting to mess her up. You know what I mean? That's like, but it's, it's the best thing because you have purpose for me. And then I know people will like kind of disagree with this, but like having a daughter like was like my purpose in life. You know what I mean? And people are like, well, you shouldn't make that your whole identity. It's like, but that's my whole life is her, you know? And I, I don't want to have like a life outside of her. So that's why she comes with me to this. And I just want her to be like around me all the time. But yeah, she was my purpose. I feel like I, I don't even know what I did before her. Like I was like, wow, my life just for me, like I didn't have a life that I liked before her. But why would somebody say not to make your, your, your children your identity? I feel like that is... A- they're easily a big portion of it and definitely an extension of your being. Yeah, but so many people since I've had her are like, you know, don't lose who you are and don't lose that, which I kind of get, but it's also like I just... Yeah, but maybe you're not losing who you are, but finding new parts of you. That's it. That's totally yeah. it, because everything's funner with her. Like, I was so excited to bring her, because I was like, oh, it's a radio show, you know? And it's, like, really exciting. And so I just like everything, like, with her now, discovering it with her. You know what I mean? You're about to see everything new for the first yeah. time with her. Oh, I swore, like, f- when she was four weeks and the My Chemical Romance concert was happening, I was like, can we put those little baby earmuffs on her? Like, I wanted to bring her, because I couldn't leave her. Like, that's the thing. I couldn't leave her, because I really wanted to go. I never ended up going. And I was like, it was that first mom guilt where I'm like, God, I really want to go, because I had tickets to every single night. And every night, I was looking for someone to, like, convince me me to go out and that's why I texted you even I was like okay do you want to go and stuff and I was I swear I was like maybe I could put little like headphones on her or something I was gonna bring her but I didn't know it didn't work out because like no one no one wanted to really go and so I was just like mm. I was able to grab you so you needed VIP though you're you're crazy you'll go to those situations and not grab yourself like a in that case, a forum club pass. I, so yeah, can, that's like, what I asked you. So it's not even that I think, oh my God, I'm so special or whatever. It was more like I didn't want to get sick around people. And just in general, I feel like with like TikTok and stuff like that, you don't, you just didn't want to get like sick. So I was just like wondering if there was like ways, because I know people do get in somehow. I don't need yeah. to be VIP. I don't really, you know, it's just more of like, I just wanted to get in without going in line. But then I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, th- I didn't know how to do it. I was able to figure it out though for you. I like. Well, we never, you just stopped no, texting me. Damn, Zach. <laughs> Fuck. But I was able to figure it out. Because I, I had tickets and I had four. I had four each night. And so that's why I was like, do you need a ticket? Like, I was trying to figure it out. And then we're so far away, too, from the four. It was just a thing. And then also, I didn't want to, like, leave her. Just four weeks postpartum. I was like, do I really leave her? Like, I feel like she needs me. You know, I don't know. I don't want to be that guy, but they'll go back on the road. You think? That's what my, that's what my husband said. But I'm like, yes. I don't know. There's been 20 years since they toured. So I don't know when the next 20 years is going to be. But is that the right? Like, But that's the mom choice you just made there. Yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, my God. I. 
Uh, that was the one time where I felt like guilty because I almost went to my chemical romance <laughs> over taking care of my daughter. She would understand. <laughs> She'd get it. That's what I think, too. <laughs> she was almost named after Gerard. It's, you know what? Honestly, I thought about that, too, for a girl. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if a girl name was Gerard? Like, that'd be really cool. Like, a boy named Sue. It'd be really cool. <laughs> I almost Sue. did. My husband didn't go for it so much. But if it was a boy, he was like, I could see Gerard. So maybe the next one if it's a boy. <laughs> I, oh my god! Oh, no. talking. I do feel like I am in the presence of our royal family when you guys came in. <laughs> Maybe Malibu. She's she was like the queen. Re- oh, <laughs> she was the reincarnation of Queen Elizabeth. Zach texted me, <laughs> and I was so embarrassed because I was like, "What do I say?" Like, I didn't even text back because he's like, "Congratulations!" <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I was like, "Oh God!" I'm like, "What is happening?" It was. You were one of the first people to text me. <laughs> You were the person I made my Instagram caption for. I'm like, to everybody, (laughs) I did not get (laughs) birth. That was like one of the most stressful times of my life. (laughs) I mean, so, I mean, that, like, when we look back at life so far, that is easily one of the most cultural shaping, (laughs) cultural relevant and aware moments of your career, no? I mean, okay. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know. I'll say it. But the New York Times literally was like, can we use this photo of Malibu? Because she's like in the pop culture moments of the New York Times 2022. And I was like, wait, what? Her being reincarnated as Queen Elizabeth. Like, that's what they want to feature. I was like, if you want. I was very, I don't know if it's out yet. I don't know when it's coming out. But they were like, can we use your permission? I was like, yeah, sure. But it's like the fact that she was, I mean, I've never trended. I've never been on CNN and Malibu was there. So I think she might be royalty. She kind of gives me Queen Elizabeth vibes, though. At the time, it was stressful. But now I'm like, I can see it, you know? Is someone here? Yeah, we have somebody in the back who loves the queen. Come in. He, 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 uh, you got to meet Kiwi Jacob. He is one of her uh, constituents. I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know what you call somebody who, (laughs) who reports to the queen. Actually, no. What do you? Hey, what do you call? Hi. What are you? Are you listening to us in there now? Oh, so you so you were so you were listening. (laughs) See that little baby on the ground? That is Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> this was, you know, she's going to be in the New York Times as a pop culture moment of the year when everybody thought that Malibu Barbie was Queen Elizabeth reincarnated. I'll believe it. Well, yeah. Do you, you want to come? Do you, would you like to just? You Are know, you from England? Oh, come, can oh. you get on a microphone, please? Okay. Wait, he's in New Zealand. He doesn't even know about the Queen. No, <laughs> this, is, this is what I had to. This is what I had to school. This is what I had to school Dan on yesterday. She's also the Queen of New Zealand. Actually, well, yeah, she a, was obviously not anymore. Yeah, but it's a part of the piece. It's a part of the Commonwealth. Wait, really? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, random. <laughs> not really. Oh my god. <laughs> random for the last century and a half. <laughs> but why? But why New Zealand? Why not like America? Why like why New Zealand? You want to teach? I mean, well, because she, I mean, she sent her people. Well, she didn't, but the, uh, the people before her sent their people there to set up shop i guess oh why i don't know because she oh. wanted to rule that the, they wanted to rule the world oh my god they, they had america of, at one point too didn't oh, they, they the british did it. i think the british did <laughs> maybe i don't know but they have a, she's the queen of australia as well oh okay it's really? not the same yeah. i had no idea oh is no. new zealand not part of australia new zealand oh, gosh. Is no right. i'll I leave you guys to it <laughs> New Zealand, no, they're, they're not two the same. Countries. <laughs> uh, Wait, really? But, but real talk, everybody, everybody in there, really, the news thought she was gonna, Queen Elizabeth. Why were people reaching out to you originally? No, I think that was it because I, oh, because the night before I tweeted that as one centimeter dilated, which if anyone knows anything, it doesn't matter if you're one centimeter. You could be giving birth in like a month, you know, it doesn't matter. But people just thought then like when the queen died, all of a sudden it was turning on Twitter that like I gave birth yeah. and her name was Lizzie or something. And it was so weird. I have no idea. I have no idea where it came from. Literally never said anything. Like it was so bizarre. I was, it was like one of the weirdest things. And like literally TMZ was calling both of our phones. Like all, it was so weird. We're like, what is happening? And everybody was texting me. You were one of the first people that texted me. And I was so confused. I'm still confused by it. I don't really get it. I don't get the connection, like, just because the queen died. But why, like, I don't know. Nick Cannon had a baby the same day. Like, why did they not say it was his baby? Exactly. Was yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it was. It was like his fourth of the year, which is everything. I wish I could have four babies a year. <laughs> not fair. <laughs> but <laughs> it was It was a crazy time. I don't know. It's really weird. It was really bizarre, but. Was it hard for you to share the news that the birth and the monarch's death did not line up? Yeah, because I feel like I was disappointing everybody. Like, everyone was so excited about it. It was, like, trending. It was, like, all over. And I was like, 
damn, like I'm like having given birth. Like I felt bad. And then I felt like when she does come, like people will be like, oh, it's oh, not now. the queen. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like not a big thing. So I was like, damn, it was ruined, you know? But it was, it was good. It was fine. I don't know. I honestly, like if it would have happened, if she would have been born like right on the day she died, I probably would have named her Elizabeth. Maybe uh, like, Queen Elizabeth, Peta <laughs> Hackman. Like probably. Because it would have been cool, but yeah. it didn't happen. I wasn't even close to giving like in labor or anything. I'm just wondering, Kiwi yeah. Jacob, do you get Kiwi Jacob? Do you get any royalty vibes from her? Any um, royal energy? Uh, <laughs> too young to say. So okay. I'll say I'll say come back in a year and we'll we'll reevaluate okay. the situation. <laughs> I'll put a little crown on her head. <laughs> I oh, get queen. Work. Yeah. <laughs> I get queen vibes. <laughs> Of course you do. You're a mother. <laughs> right, right. Thank you. I know. I think she's a superstar. I think all this. But speaking of Australia? Uh, New Zealand. Oh, shit. Okay, Which never they mind. Are different. I was going to say, My Chemical Romance is going to Australia next year. Oh. We no. can go. We want to go. Can you get tickets? Yeah, I'll get tickets. <laughs> You want to go on the trip? I mean, she, you, your baby will be able to take care of herself by then. Yeah, by that so. point, she'll have her shots. It'll be good. Let's go. <laughs> I want to go to New Zealand or Australia. Like, I would love to. I've I, never been. Me, me too. I want to go. But what's the difference? Yeah, what is the difference? I mean, a whole different country. They're like they're three <laughs> hours apart, but separated by a sea. It's like America and Canada. It's like America. Yes. And Canada. Well, no, but you guys share a land border. We don't like Australia and New Zealand don't even oh. share a land border. There's literally three hours of sea in between. Really? <laughs> yes. If you look at a world map and you see Australia to the right, you'll see this tiny yeah. little shoe-looking thing. Yeah, actually, oh, here's the globe. Okay, let me take it. it over because it's very small. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna... Yeah, let me see. You're an island then. Yes. You're an yeah. island boy. Here we go. Oh, that's oh. New Zealand. That's <gasps> Australia. You guys are so small compared to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so tiny. That's what she said. <laughs> Why is like, it so small on the map? I feel like Dan's going to see as well. Dan, this is the difference. <laughs> oh, that's small as hell. Yeah. This goes really far. Good geography lessons. It's crazy. I know. <laughs> we always have to have foreigners teach us. I never know. No, he, my, <laughs> he's, he's brought a lot of knowledge into my life. I Things love that. that. I, I'm very uncultured, right? I get it. And most Americans are. Wait, what do you do here? What do you do here? He, he helps produce the yeah, show. Just, I mean, just whatever I got to do, really. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I need to get a Kiwi Jake is your name? Yes. Kiwi Jake. Kiwi Jacob. We I can, need a Kiwi Jacob. We can share them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> get them part time. I mean, you know. I love that. We'll, we'll lease them out to you. Well, so okay. <laughs> Poor Kiwi Jacob. <laughs> well, we'll call you if we need a translator. Were you on, were you on the phone <laughs> for my chemical <laughs> romance? I'm, I'm glad to have been the guy that taught you that Australia is different to New Zealand. Yeah, I had no idea. And I'm also glad to have learnt that your baby is is the is new the queen. queen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what a She's day. She's the old queen reincarnate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to rule New Zealand? We're going to go. Look at her. She's down for it. She's so okay. up for the job. Yeah. <laughs> She's queen vibes. What were you doing? Were you... Were you did we disturb you in there? No, not really. No. Were, what yeah, were you doing? I, I was on the phone. Oh, <laughs> Who were you did you knock? To? My mom. Oh, that's cute. Were oh. you knocking? Uh, no, he was knocking at me. And oh. I was like, oh, shit, oh. something's going wrong. No. You but, just wanted to say hi. Yeah. I like it. Well, well I'm, I'm glad. To, I, yeah. I want you to meet the fucking queen, man. Oh, right. <laughs> that's where it all came from. Yeah. Wait, do I have to curtsy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get, get, get in there. <laughs> bow. Bow. Okay. Bow. <laughs> bow before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, you, did, you, did you know that Malibu Barbie was the third most Googled celebrity baby of this year? No. Yes, she is that was. true? How Acor do you know that? You Googled to, it. According to Google, <laughs> it was it was Amber Heard's baby, Rihanna's baby, and then Trisha Paytas' no baby. No way! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Wow! <laughs> How are we monetizing any of this? I though? don't know. We're not. We're not. I guess I should. People think I am. Like, oh, she's exploiting her baby. I'm like, I'm not making any money off her. I mean, I'm not against it. If someone wants a show or something, but <laughs> people are so crazy. They think I had a baby for money. I'm like, how? How do you gain money no. having a baby? Babies are so expensive. Incredibly expensive. <laughs> yeah. And that is so not your driving f factor behind You it. have to take care of her. Like, you have to take care of a baby. You don't just get a baby and show her and that's it. <laughs> News to me. Just kidding. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Did you have any help? I mean, your no. mom's around or... No, um, no, it's really just us. My mom is close to us, but it's really like us. And yeah, I'm not like against nannies. Before I had a kid, like I feel like before people have kids, they have like so much judgment. And I was that person who was like, oh my God, nannies, like so embarrassing. But I get why people have them. I just don't have one. It's not, not anything other than like, I just want her to like be attached to me. You know what I mean? I don't of know. Course. You know, I don't know, but I'm not against it because I, I get it. I get why people have, maybe if I was busier, but I'm really not that busy. Like when I do, this is like the first thing I've done in like a year. <laughs> when I asked you to come on, you answered so quickly. Yeah, I was like, like, yeah. yeah no, there, but when? you know what? I have been asked to be on other podcasts and I just, I don't know. I don't like oh, the thanks. drama podcast. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, mm, I just come on this one because I like you guys. Yeah, but That's what drama? It. Who the fuck? Like, why? Like, 
who, 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 who's like who's asking you to come on? What, on what? different podcasts? Oh, like um, is it the Jeff Wittick? No. Oh, no. Why am I in drama podcast? with him? Huh? I love no, that show. No, no, I just I don't know any of the. All, there's so many. Does podcasts. he have a podcast? Oh, oh, oh! I see what you're saying. Like who asked? Um, BFFs. Oh yeah, BFFs have asked. I don't have any what like. Do you, what do we think of Dave Portnoy? I actually like. I think I like him. I don't know anything about him, but I like. I like his girlfriend. His girlfriend is like so cute. I mean, I don't know their age difference, which kind of like puts me. I mean, I'm not uneasy about it, but it's kind of like weird. But she's so pretty and so cute. I don't know. I'm not judging. I definitely don't judge that. But like, yeah, I like him. I think. I don't know. I don't judge anyone anymore. I can't judge anybody. I probably would have in the past. I'm like, okay, that's a lot. But mm-hmm. I was on BFFs one time, and it was just like via Zoom. They were fine. They just, you know, that show's all about like drama, and I'm just like, it's yeah. and it's and the fact that I'm not in drama. So if we're talking about drama from like two years, it's so boring. I'm like, okay, well, let's not talk about drama for that's, two years. Ago. I want to talk to the mom that is Trisha Paytas. Thank you. Like, that's the, relief. <laughs> that's what I find so fascinating. Fascinating. It's like, Thanks. really, like, what time does your day start every day? Um, oh, it's like never ending because, well, now she kind of sleeps till 4.30, but it's kind of like never ending. We're just like up in cycles with her, which is kind of fun. It's like a vibe. It's like a little like rave. It just goes all night. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like kind of fun. But um, yeah, we're up what? all the time with her. I mean, we kind of switch nights. So like one of us can get a full night's sleep. Yeah. Like today I had this. So I was like, watched her last night and stuff. But he's also just the best. Like if I need like a mental break or whatever, like he'll just like, like the My Chemical Romance, I had a breakdown. I like cried and he just like watched her for like, you know, a few hours and I had my me time and stuff like that because I needed a minute. But that's a team. Yeah. No, he's the greatest. And I get it. And I, I, I like, oh my God, anyone who's a single parent, I like totally respect so much because I don't know how people do it. I could never do it. I'd have to have like help at that point. So he like does everything. And if you are a single parent, that's amazing. I think that's like the coolest thing. My mom was. And how she did it with three kids, I don't know. I have like a new respect for parents after was, becoming one. Do you, yeah. have a new, do you see your mom through a new lens now that you're a mom? Yes. Oh my God, so much. I just feel like when I... You know, you always think, oh, my parents messed me up and all this and stuff like that. But it's like they're just trying their best. Because I never saw my parents. They were always working. But, like, I understand why they were working because they wanted us to, like, have nice things and stuff. So it's a balance, like, trying to figure out how to work and also how to be, like, a mom. Because, I don't know. That's why I play the Mega Millions. I just want to win, like, $300 million (laughs) so I don't have to work. (laughs) You know? Because I like work. I like what I do. I like working. But it's also, like, you know, I want to be with her 24-7. So it's a balance. What is the hardest part about being a mom? (sighs) I think just, yeah, just trying not to mess her up you know like just trying to like figure out like hopefully I'm doing enough hopefully I'm doing what's right you know what I mean I don't know I think that's like the biggest and just also feeling guilt like I feel like I'm not doing enough for her even if I'm around her 24 7 if I do like one thing for myself or if even I'm filming a video for work I feel like guilty not being around her so it's just like that guilt and stuff even though we're literally together like she's always and we're always in the house together it's still like one of those things I don't know that's why I just don't like to like leave her ever (laughs) I that's like really kind of beautiful, right? Like if that's yeah. the hardest part is like being afraid that you're just not, not spending enough time with her and not being there enough for her. Yeah, because I just never want her to feel like abandoned. I feel like when I was a kid, I felt that way. Again, I, my parents were good. Like I'm not trying to like whatever. But when my parents got divorced, my dad stayed in California. And my mom moved us back to Illinois, right? So like you just, you felt abandoned, even though like you, now I understand why, like he's there for work and stuff, but you just feel abandoned. I just don't want her to ever feel like I've abandoned her. Like, so I feel like I would always just take her. But I also know that's not realistic. Like parents have to work, right? Like, you know, parents leave their kids and stuff, but um, I'm lucky that I have the job that I have, which is like, now I just do ASMR videos. That's what I discovered during pregnancy. <laughs> I just start doing ASMR, like, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I have my nails. Oh, it's not really like, where's the microphone? Why is it not? It sounds good to me. Oh, it's not like amped up. Though. No, no, it needs to be heightened a little bit. Yeah, I love ASMR. It's like my favorite thing now, and that's what I do. And so now I only have to like spend an hour away from her a day. So oh. Oh, <laughs> explain. Oh, sorry, you go. Yeah. I was like, how do you feel about people saying you shouldn't do OnlyFans anymore now that you're a mom? Uh, interesting. Like, I kind of get it. I kind of get where they're coming from because honestly, when I, I don't do, I don't do anything new. I haven't done anything new since I became a mom. I just sell old content, which is like, you know, great. But I do get conflicted with it. I understand it because like, I do feel sometimes like guilt about it. Like one day she's going to like know about it. Right. And people are like, oh, people are going to make fun of her and stuff like that. And like, that's like the, just the truth of it. Um, so yeah, there's that guilt, you know, there's that guilt there too. And I get it. I get why people say it. I mean... Because it's just tough. It's just tough when you do, like, sex work and have a baby. It's just, like, kind of... You know, I keep it separate. Like, anything on Twitter, like, I don't really promote OnlyFans. I think, like, you're not allowed to anymore. Like, Elon Musk or something's, like, not allowing it on Twitter. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I try and keep it separate. So, like, my baby is, like, I have, like, a family channel and an Instagram. And then, like, Twitter is, like, OnlyFans. I mean, really can't promote OnlyFans anywhere anymore. That's why I didn't even know if I could say it. Because people are very, like, strict on it. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, I just sell, like, old content. I mean, literally from, like, two years ago. And, like, that's, like, the main income. So, it's, like, it's kind of one of those things, too, where it's, like, uh, I don't want to stop it because it's, like, the main, you know, it's, like, yeah. a good income. It's, like, a really good income for doing literally nothing. But just... do, do you think that stigma can lessen, you know, over time by the time that she's, like, going to school? Like, I feel like the, yeah. it's lessened so far over the last 
just a couple of years. Yeah, I totally think so. I think I think what's like messing with my head are like the trolls that are just like you know, oh, like she's gonna get made fun of. But I, that's what I like to think too. I think people are like way more open minded and just also like accepting, and it's like not cool to like shame sex workers and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think as long as like you can keep it pretty separate, obviously, you know, I think it's a good thing. But. Yeah, I, I like I, I get it. Like I understand people like judgment on it. It's like you're a mom and you're doing this, and it's like you know. But at the same time, like whatever. I mean, it's like natural. Whatever. I also weirdly think that like when I mention Trisha Paytas to someone, they don't even think OnlyFans. Yeah, they think, think of that. a thousand other. Things. Yeah, no, it's so low key because I don't even promote it anywhere because you really can't. It's like so low key about it. So that's also, what's kind of cool. You're yeah, relevant for everything, but thanks. I appreciate that. For what? I don't even know what I'm relevant for. I don't even know what people like think of me anymore. I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like I kind of like since being pregnant kind of like faded a little bit, like obscurity, which is yeah, like but, fine. Yeah, but you still last. Like I, there's a, You're just Trisha Paytas at there's this point. There's some oh, photo hey, of you. I love you guys. <laughs> there, I think there's <laughs> like a photo of you like eating noodles at a, a, a picnic table. <laughs> what? And you, you're making this face and it was in a meme the other day what? that I saw it. I was like, this is Noodles. Amazing. It's probably like pasta or something like spaghetti. Yeah, pasta, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's so <laughs> random. I know now it's just memes and like the new young generation's finding like old memes like I love you Jesus and stuff and they're just like recycling it. So I think it's good. I can just kind of like recycle old content and be relevant, yeah, you know? Forever. It's kind of great. Yeah. But TikTok is great. Even though you don't make any money, like everyone who comes up to me on the street now is just TikTok people. Like they don't even know I have a YouTube yeah, channel. <laughs> I, by the way, like I feel that. Yeah, right? They know yeah. you from TikTok and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's where it's at. Well, I love you Jesus went viral after uh, what Ter- Terry Joe, is that the name? And Madonna? Oh, yeah. Madonna said I had a voice of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wow, your voice is angelic. I mean, she thought it was another person, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I was so excited about that. I was like, wow. It's still your voice. Yeah. And she said it was angelic. <laughs> she was feeling it. <laughs> Do you reach out to her? Madonna? Yeah. No. <laughs> But I think her manager is Israeli. Because, okay, so there's, like, this guy. He's, like, Israeli. He's, like, a manager of, like, all these popular bands, like, U2 and Madonna. And he's Israeli. And my husband's Israeli. So I try and use that connection and be, like, oh, my husband's Israeli. Ooh. Like, you're Israeli. Because I, you know, I just want to meet, like, Adam Sandler. And I feel like he – did he manage Adam Sandler? I don't know. I feel like Israelis all know each other. Because my husband, if you say he's Israeli, my husband will know him. You know what Dude. I mean? They just all know each other. So Wherever you go, there's always someone Jewish. You never yeah. alone. You <laughs> say you're a Jew. <laughs> right. You can't even say anything anymore about anything. Like, I don't even mention that my husband's Jewish because people just will call anti semitic like oh my god they, it's like what? a crazy thing yeah, yeah i get like canceled all the time like i have my hanukkah necklace on today and people are like anti-semitic like have just, you thought I, of converting no i was going to i was going to and it was really tough <laughs> it was it's really tough it's really yeah, hard. It's hard so we just celebrate i mean technically it's so weird too it's so confusing i don't really know why but i'm like oh my daughter's half jewish will celebrate hanukkah but then people are like no she's not jewish if the mom's not jewish or something i don't know so i don't know we just celebrate both i just like culture tradition all that i mean it's basically kind of the same as christianity we both like the old testament we all both believe in that you know <laughs> I boil religion down to some holidays sometimes. Wait, that's what? That's pretty shitty. What? I boil religion down to holidays. I'm Jewish oh. and I'm dressed up as a Christmas tree right now. Wait, Celebrate you're Jewish? All. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you can say. I feel like if you're Jewish, you can say Jewish. But even me saying Jewish is going to be like, oh my God, she's anti Semitic. I don't know. I got like last year, there was like a really horrible article calling me an anti Semite because I danced to like a hot, like the menorah song on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, come light the, the menorah. menorah. And I was like, Oh my god, yeah, do you remember that one? Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, Hanukkah come light, light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance, dance a horror. Gather around oh. the table, well, I'll give you a treat. More. Is that a real song? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just like a TikTok song people did. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yes. I have my Hanukkah necklace because I have my Santa hat and I have a Hanukkah necklace too. We're just like all of it. You know, all of it in one. Hanukkah's coming up the 18th. Happy Hanukkah. I don't know when this is coming out, but. You're doing this look as well as Amy Poehler, if not better. (laughs) Oh, thank you. I know. I was, that was like the vibe I was going for because I I know you said like costume and I was trying to think of like a costume. When you texted me last week, I thought you wanted me to come that day. I was dressed as like Harry Potter or something and I was like, do you want me to come now? Like, because you said the Backstreet Boys canceled on you. I'm like, I'm coming. Don't worry. <laughs> By the way, it's T as to why the Backstreet Boys canceled. Well, now they're canceled. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. They canceled. On- Wait, is that why they were canceled? We don't know. Cannot confirm nor Oh, deny. but that news. Oh, maybe they knew it was coming out or something. We I feel that's sad. Sick. Yeah, it was very oh. sad. But we were told they were sick. All of them? <laughs> Not one could come. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, three could have come and represented it or something. They're I don't all know. busy. <laughs> No comment, but yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh man, God, it's, mm, I don't know. There's not. Yeah, no comment on it either. It's sad. It's sad, but is it sad? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Can you still play the banjo? No, I never really could. I could play like uh, 
Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Like, you know, like I can do that, but that's about it. Why do you have one? No. <laughs> I'm always scared. People are going to be like, here's a banjo, play it. <laughs> do you still speed read? Um, <laughs> I don't that, know if I ever like did that for like a thing. It's no. like speed talking, right? Yeah. I mean, if like someone asked me to, I will, you know, I think, you know, like on the Ellen show or something, I, I'll do it, but I don't do it for like fun. No, I was just wondering how somebody learns how to do that. I don't think you can. I feel like it's really? like, yeah, I feel like it's like singers. Like you're either, you either do it or you don't. Like how can you learn to speed read and you just do it? Oh, that's fascinating. Do you know what I mean? I've been yeah. watching the show, Kath and Kim, highly recommend. Kath and Kim, who's that? It's an Australian show. Talking a lot about things down under. Wow. Fantastic. But she allegedly was able to learn how to speed read. She could course in it. But why would she want to? Like, why would someone want to learn that? I mean, she's just had time in her hands and she's like, you learn new skills. (laughs) like, let me learn to speed read. Who the fuck am I to judge that? No, for sure. I didn't know that was like a thing. I don't know. Like, let me just feel like. Yeah, I didn't know if you learned, if it was an acquired skill or something that you just Just realized you could do. Yeah, like, I think in school, you know, like when they tell you to like read, like, and then you'll get out of class, people are like, how's that Trisha read? And I read it and then you get out of class early. So I think I just always knew how to do it. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe I'm a super genius. I'm not sure <laughs> i don't know how i don't know it's cool though i mean people like it are there like what sort of traits do you have that you want to pass down to malibu barbie <laughs> i just can't believe i refer to a baby as malibu, <laughs> malibu barbie. barbie you know i just you know want her to be like independent i really just want her to be herself you know that's the big thing i just like want her to feel like she's like loved and she can be who she is i feel like that's what's cool about the like each generation right you get to be more and more yourself i feel like our generation like it just was kind of like you know you kind of had to hide who you were like mm. especially like i feel like when we were younger how do you get to your 30s or no uh, i'm 29 29 you t- i'm 32 in a week oh oh yeah you guys are young oh my god well, happy early birthday thank you that's exciting are you capricorn sagittarius oh what that means i have no idea yeah i don't either i just know <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Elvis was a Capricorn and he's like January. So I was like, are you a Capricorn? I don't know. Did you have Austin Butler on the show? Side note. I wish. I love Austin Butler. Yeah, he's oof. Ooh. But I only like him as Elvis. Like I never liked him in like Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. I like him as Elvis, you know? <laughs> Did you know Harry Styles was supposed to be Elvis or he was like considered yeah, to be Elvis? Yeah. I, How? You know. How? No. You went to Harry Ween, didn't you? I did. Ugh. You don't like Harry Styles? Oh, I probably get canceled. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. I really love him. I don't like his music or anything. Really? But I think I'm old. I'm like a boomer. Am I a boomer? What am I? What generation am I? Am I X? Am I Gen X? No, no. I don't know. I'm like boomer. Huh? Millennial. So we what? What's your problem with Harry Styles' music? <sighs> Um, I just, it's like not catchy. Like the, all the TikTok sounds. What's that one? It's like watermelon sugar. And I was like, this is not catchy. Like I forgot what he was saying and it was only two words. Like I couldn't like lip sync to it because I was like, this is not catchy. Like it's not memorable. I don't have anything really like issue with him. I just think like. Have you tried his album, Harry's House? Harry's House? No. Yeah. Should I? Uh, yes. It's really fantastic. <sighs> okay. He's amazing. I should have hate because honestly he's popular. I like to be with what's popular. So maybe I should. I, I, I feel like you'd fall over him. Like I think really? if you gave him a okay. shot and really get. Really soaked in his performance, you uh, you may become obsessed. Really, I thought his band was really great. One Direction, yes, <laughs> but I was more of like a Zayn fan, a Zayn Malik. Fan. Did you guys have him on? The- We've had all of them. One Direction, except people? for Liam Payne. Well, so I've interviewed One Direction as a group twice. Oh, you have? Yeah, uh, they were great. Yeah, they're, they're all amazing people, and together they were oh, something that was just out of this world. Yeah. Um, but all of the the guys have come on the show by themselves except for Liam Payne. Yeah. Wow. So Harry Styles came, but not Liam Payne. Yeah. And Harry Styles is like the A list. Yeah, Harry's right? call, Harry's called in t- two or three times. Yeah, Harry hasn't been in. We've had him on the phone. Same with Zayn. Oh, was he cool? He's. I, I met him. Yeah, yes, met him in, as a group. Been with him in person a bunch. He's amazing. Did you get VIP to the Harry Ween? Uh, you know, a little bit. Did you? Yeah, I mean, like, why couldn't we get VIP at MCR then? I, I swear, <laughs> I, there was passes under my name that what? were. You yes. stopped texting me. I was so down to go. I was like ready to go, and I was like, you know, what? I don't want to drive all the way to Inglewood because it's like a two-hour drive from where I live. I so thought I we like, came to terms with you being with Malibu Barbie four weeks after <laughs> she was born. <laughs> Because I have like front row. I don't know if front row is cool anymore. I feel like front row is not cool because you always sit in like the booths or something, right? Is that the VIP? I like to be in the front. Like yeah. I would like to see like him sweating. You know what you're I mean? You're a barricade person. Yeah. Well, no, I don't want to be in the barricade. There's like another one that's like you're not in the barricade. Like there's one seat up. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. I looked at the seats on like my form or whatever and it was like the first row, but not like the mosh. I don't know if there's the a mosh. mosh? <laughs> 
<laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> and you went to the When We Were Young festival, and I was like, why did oh, you tell yeah. me about that? Uh, I wanted to go. Did you go? No, yeah, we were at that one. Yeah, but we, I, we We'd did, actually go to the festival, though. No, I left the festival. Did I, you work? Were you working? We, we were helping produce Emo Night Radio over there. Did you guys get to meet Gerard? No. No. Does he not yeah. do press? He's just like not about it. He's very limited. They, oh. uh, you know, Frank is the only one who's really been on the show. Yeah, we love him though. We, we stand do him. Love, him. We love Frank. Do you think Gerard just is like a re- or he just like doesn't need it or he's just like a recluse or what? I feel like probably does it. Uh, probably a combination of both. I've seen yeah. him do interviews about his comics though. Yes. Yes. Like really random yeah. interviews. Like you'll see the podcast has like a hundred views. You're like, what the heck? He just like, <laughs> so, I live for it. But I'm like, what is he doing? Or it'd be like a red carpet or something. Yeah. Really brief. Like, oh, I've he does those. do that. He does like interviews on the red carpet. Only seen for him. only for like projects of like I guess comic stuff or like movies or TV shows like Umbrella Academy. So why did he tour? Is he just like I feel like he just hates MCR. Like he why did he tour? Because he didn't promote it. He they didn't, didn't need to promote it. But, like, don't you want us to be like, look at me with the fans. Like, Frank promotes it. Like, look at yeah. me with the fans. Mikey promotes it. Everyone promotes it. But he didn't. And it's like, I think it's cool. Like, it gets that mysterious vibe to him. But it's also like, why didn't he? Is well, he just I, over it? I just, I, I am interested in his relationship with it, right? <sighs> like, what does it mean to him? Does it fulfill him? Like, what is the driving factor behind him doing the tour? Right. But does My Chemical Romance exist without him? I think that's a larger no, question. No, what? Oh, no. no so then, chance. like, so, yeah. So, it could have been a situation where all those guys wanted to tour. He didn't, but they convinced him to do it. But I also think My Chemical Romance wouldn't exist without Mikey Way. I don't think it totally. exists without Ray Tour. You, you know, need I think, all of them. Yeah, I think you do need all of them. It's like when NSYNC like, performs without Justin at like Coachella. It's like, mm, it's not NSYNC, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just and four you guys. Can, yeah, you can yeah. <laughs> We love them, but together they're NSYNC. You True. know, like we couldn't do it without Joy Fatone, you no. know, right. But I just, okay, if Gerard comes on, can I be just a co-host? Yes. yes. As okay. long as you dress like him. Okay. <laughs> I almost <laughs> thought about coming again and said, because did you see he dressed his costume in every one of his shows? And I was yeah. like, wow, this is really like my platonic soulmate in life. You know, <laughs> I feel like we are twin flames because he was a co- different character. He dressed as emo Gerard at the one we were young festival. Like <laughs> this Helena. I was like, oh my God, I love him. This is kind of everything. <laughs> Malibu. Does she want to say something? Do you want to say something? <laughs> Has she made ASMR yet? No, baby ASMR. Do you want to make it? Is she or is she? She's okay. Here, come here, make a little baby oh, ASMR. Her big interview debut. <gasps> Malibu Barbie <laughs> live on the mic. Here we go. We'll just do a little baby ASMR. And Moses. And Moses. <laughs> okay. Here's the mic. Do you want to say something? <laughs> oh. No. What do you think of Gerard Way? <laughs> <laughs> Have you played My Chemical Romance for her yet? Um, yes, actually. And she really is a fan. <laughs> she really is. Oh my god. I feel like she really loves like the Black Parade, which is not my favorite album, oh. but it's her favorite album. She loves it. Have you played Harry Styles for her yet? <laughs> <laughs> Should we? Maybe she's a Harry fan. <laughs> I only know the was I like do I know a Harry Styles song? Oh, you're insecure. Don't know what for. He went. Oh, <laughs> what's Harry Styles? Um, I don't know. I get him and Justin Bieber mixed up with their music. I don't know like which songs you are, are which. You are such a mom. <laughs> I totally did become one. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so like, weird. What's the biggest thing that's changed in you? Um, like that you can notice. I mean, I feel like I haven't changed. It's weird. It's like, I feel like I haven't changed that much as like a person. It's just more of like letting things go. I feel like I always like held on to grudges and like held on to things. And I kind of just like let things go. Like I said, I feel like people are always expecting me to like clap back or have a meltdown or something. And it's just kind of like, I, like, I can let things go. But you know what it is? It's like meditation. When I was pregnant with her, I started like meditating. I became a Hare Krishna. So I started like oh. meditating like every day for like hours when I was pregnant with her. And so now I can like really handle things. Because I have like borderline personality disorder. So I have like a really bad like mental illness that had no medication. And not that I still have it. I just like regulate it better. So or regulate it a lot better. So I think that's like been the biggest difference because of her. And because I was pregnant with her, I was like, okay, I got to be calm. I got to be, you know, get my emotions under control. So really, like, anything, you know, because babies, you know, they cry, they're allowed, all that stuff like that. And it's, like, nothing really just, like, bothers me. So if, like, I feel like if that's the case, like, I don't, nothing bothers me on the internet. You know what I mean? Someone could be, like, Trisha is, like, a disgusting, like, pig or whatever. I'm, like, whatever, you know? How, how <laughs> often were you meditating throughout the day? I mean, when I was pregnant, it was, like, hours. I would meditate for, like, five hours in the morning. I was, like, Buddhist, you know? I was, wow. like, because I love Buddha, too. I love a lot of his teachings and stuff like that, like, just being in the moment, being in the present and all that stuff like that. Um, but Hare Krishna and it, Hinduism specifically, like, they're really into big, into, like, consciousness in the moment, like, you know, clear thoughts, like, good and bad thoughts. I just clear my head. Like, there's no thoughts in my head. <laughs> sounds bad. It's like there's no <laughs> thoughts in my head, throughout the, you know, ever. And it's, it's a beautiful thing because you can just be in the moment and you're, you know, 
thoughts don't control you and all of that stuff. Because I had a lot of intrusive thoughts too. So getting rid of those and just getting rid of all thoughts was kind of like the best thing that happened to me. And it's because of her because I was like, okay, I need to like really, you know, get it together for her sake. You know, I can't just be like crying and like all this stuff. That's that's a life changing realization. Yeah. And also like a really beautiful practice. Do you still meditate that much? Um, I try and do like a half hour in the morning at least. Uh. So like instead of going, <laughs> instead of like going number two, I just like meditate. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> like you only have time for that as a, as a, as a parent is like you really could either like go to the bathroom or like, you know, that's it. Oh, the pacifier came out. Do you want to say something? But, um, <laughs> like when you look at her, what do you feel? And I'm just interested as somebody who like dreams of being a parent one day. Do you want to be a parent? Of course. Do you want to be a parent? No. I don't think so. See, I respect both. I like people because it's a lot of work. Like people who like know they don't want kids, like that's good because some people have kids and like instantly, you know, regret. But I will say this is like when I look at her, it's just like, it's, it's really, it's an extension of you, right? And it's just a baby version of you. So you just want to like take care of the baby version of you, right? Because like you weren't taken care of or at least I could be. So when I look at her, I see baby me and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take care of her like the way I want her to be taken care of, you know, just making sure she's safe. And, you know, I'm so lucky again that I have like a really good husband because like my dad, like I love him now. We're good. But, you know, he was in California. I was in Illinois. I didn't get to see him a lot. So I felt like abandoned and like to see her with like her dad and stuff. It's like just, I don't know how to say it. It's just like living the life like you wish you would have had mm-hmm. as a baby. And again, like I said, my parents, every parent tries their best, but like every parent also screws up. You know what I mean? There's just no way to be a perfect parent. So um, I just try my best with her. But she makes everything amazing and fun. Does she get spoiled at Christmas? Oh, yeah. And she, well, and Hanukkah. So she gets like, you know, all these gifts. You know, she has Hanukkah eight nights and Christmas. She's getting. Yeah, we got her so much already. We got her this little bling Maserati from like <laughs> Neiman Marcus. It was like thirty two thousand dollars. It was crazy. What? And we don't have that. I mean, we don't really have that money, but we got it because we're like, it's her first Christmas. You know, <laughs> oh my, <God. laughs> my husband's like, we need to figure out spending in the new year. I was like, I know, but it's, you know, it's a, it's cute, you know, hopefully. I don't know. But yeah, she definitely gets spoiled. And just in general, like I just like to buy things for her. But there's just a baby. You know, she doesn't really get it and she <laughs> she just wants to play with like literally like your fingers or something although these are pressed on by the way too i don't want people coming for me and be like how can you take care of a baby with those nails they literally come off real jeez yeah so i have like Wait, <laughs> I that's have crazy that yeah so people are always like how can you take care of a baby with those nails and i'm like they come off <laughs> that's Real, like, your life has changed <laughs> like this like things in your everyday everything's different now yeah everything everything is different and it's but again like i feel it, it just feels better it just feels funner like life feels fun like i said before having kids and this is just for me personally again like people who don't want kids i totally respect that too because it's like i get it it's a lot but for me i i really did not like my life i was not un, i was unhappy for the majority of my life i met my husband and it got a lot better they always say like love can't like heal a person, but like he totally healed me. Like I was like, oh, this feels, I feel like someone loves me enough. Like I should love myself, you know? So then I started loving myself when I met my husband. And then when she came along, I was just like, oh, this is why I'm like still here. Cause you know, like there's so many times you like don't want to, a lot of people, you know, you don't want to live. You don't, you know, whatever. And then as soon as I had her, I was like, oh, this is like the reason. And why, why, you know, also you think about that, like babies you are like, why do we, you know, why do we procreate? Why do we create new life? It's like such a, I don't know the meaning to life, but there has to be a meaning. There has to be a purpose of why we're here in this world, but oh yeah, just creating life. Like, creating life is a beautiful thing. I don't know. Totally new perspective. Yeah. It's so Really something. I think you'd be a really great dad. Thanks. I think you'd that, be really great. That means a lot. Because you're so, like, just caring and nurturing. Like, you're the one consistent person that, like, has been in my life that's, like, you come up to my parties. Like, I you do. always show I went support. to your wedding. My wedding, yes. That of was so course. fun. You were at the music table. I had a whole music table of people. <laughs> you're really, I really love you and I really respect you and I, I really appreciate what you've done. over. You've been on YouTube 16 years. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. January 4th will be 16 years on YouTube. I started when I was 18. You want to go back to daddy? <laughs> I started when I was 16. This is a baby. She, look, she holds her neck up. Isn't that crazy? That's strong. And she can. People are like, support her neck. I'm like, no. At two months, they can support. People are just so, they think they know everything. <laughs> she's, she's, and she she's rolls beautiful. over. Hey, like, she's literally right she there. She really <laughs> is the perfect combination of the two of you. It's also, really wild. I also love how you all match today. Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, things. that's like, a, like, like, that's like the, what you have to do as parents is like all match. And that's so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. I feel like I wanted to have a baby originally just to like match Outfits. her. Yeah. <laughs>
Does it bother you when people come at you on the internet about the nails or the neck or holding, like, how you parent? Yes, of course. But at the same time, like, what am I going to do not post her? Because I'm so, the other thing is, like, posting her. Oh, she posts her too much and stuff. And then when you don't post her, it's like, you need to go be around your kid. So you really can't win. Mm -hmm. And it does bother me, like, to, like, on a whole new level because I'm like, really? But then you have to, like, realize, like, most of these people don't really, like, one, they don't know our situation. And because, like, literally, there's people online that are like, oh, they're like horrible parents. And it's like, how do you know that? You know, like, no one knows anything. So I kind of just, like, but the neck thing, like, bothers me because now she's like two and a half months and people like support her neck I'm like she can support her neck at this age like it's totally fine like used to I don't know people just start a lot but I get it I put my life out there and that's why I'm like pretty open to it it's just more when they say stuff about her mm. I'm like oh I get so pissed I get so pissed about that but at the same time she's beautiful and she's awesome and I think she has like a really great life so anyone who hates on a baby is just like weirdly <laughs> jealous yeah, yeah they're like just sad like and I get it you know sometimes I felt my parents didn't love me either so I'd be like a hater but it's like you gotta get over it you know it's a baby don't hate on a baby is it hard for you to come to terms with the fact that like you are beholden to the internet because it's how you pay the bills yeah it's like weird because it's like YouTube doesn't pay the bills anymore either but it's like I, I just I like love it you know what I mean like I love the internet because it's really cool like you can connect with like so many people and, and do so many things but um, but yeah and I I don't know. I think it's just the world we live in. Like, that's life now, you know, is life on the internet. Like, social media is such a big thing, right? I, I never see myself, like, getting off of it. Like, I just love it. Even if it is, meaning, like, my YouTube channel gets no views, but I still post every day because <laughs> it's fun, you know? Like, it's like a diary and it's like something I do. I post every day on all four channels and, like, literally no one watches and I just have so much fun. Like, I just love to post. Are you editing these videos yourself? Yeah. Do you have somebody? No, I edit it myself. Yeah. She, she naps a lot now, so I can get a lot done when she naps. <laughs> Are you proud of all the content you've created over the years, or do you wish you could like wipe the internet clean and restart? I wish I could wipe it clean and restart. It's so embarrassing. Oh, my God. I don't think we'll ever be able to wipe Trisha Paytas from uh, the internet I completely. wish they would sometimes. Oh, my God. Not completely, but there's just so many things that get brought up to this day from like 10 years ago, and you're just like, why are you bringing that up? It's like so embarrassing. It's like literally so embarrassing, but it's life. I think I did one called like the 100 Layers of Cum Challenge, and it's like still out there, and it's so embarrassing. I was like, I was just going to be wiping lube on my face i'm like what was i doing at 24 years old it was so bad it was so embarrassing but have you thought about how you're going to explain these videos to malibu when she's older well, that's what i worry about as a parent i'm like oh okay but i feel like hopefully she can like learn from me i can be like you know what you have other opportunities because i didn't think there was any other opportunity for me besides rubbing jizz on my face you know what i mean i thought that was it for me but she'll know she has other areas to explore before that and there's nothing wrong with it. I just wish I knew I had other options. Because I do think, like, I always say this about porn and, like, sex work. I wish they would have, like, an age limit. Like, at least be 25 before you, like, go into it. Because yeah. once you're into it, it's there forever. Like, you're saying, like, start, like, a family, like, a dynamic. And I wish I could, but it's, like, you really, there's no coming back from it. Which is, like, okay, and I'm okay with that. But, yeah, it's, like, I wish they would, like, wait. Because when I was, like, 21 doing, like, sex work, I was, like, God, I wish I would have, like, waited before. Well, your brain isn't even fully formed at that point. That's what I'm saying. They should have, like, a like an age, like, limp, you know? I mean, there's 25-year-olds yes. who look young if they're obsessed with, like, you know, young girls or whatever doing it. I wish they wouldn't do it at 18, but, you know. Maybe this could be some a legislation you push. I would love to. I would love to. But I don't want sex workers to come for me because it's not what sex workers like. Just because you had a bad experience in me, I did. But most, the majority of them do. Like Lana Rhodes has come out recently talking about how she wished she like didn't do what she did at like 18 and stuff. And I think it's just like you said, your brain's not fully developed so you don't know. Like I thought it was always going to be cool, but I was like, damn, I wish I didn't start so early. But like, don't you think all of those experiences made you into the person you are today? <laughs> totally. And I like, I wouldn't take any of that back. Like I feel like that's like, you know, yeah, that totally makes you, you have like more compassion for people when you do sex work. You know what I mean? Because people judge you so much that you like would never judge anyone else because you're like, okay, damn, I know what it feels like. So it totally does. Um, I just like, again, having a daughter, I kind of wish I didn't have all that out there. You know what I mean? And people yeah. are like, well, why don't you take your only fans? I was like, okay, well, I already did it and it's making money. So if like I already, I'm not doing anything no, new. What you else know? you need to provide? Like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, it's like totally for me, it's like, I don't feel like guilt about it or anything like that. It's just, it is what it is, you know? And I'm like, it would be, it would be on like Pornhub or something if I didn't post it. So now I have mm -hmm. like, a, I have like companies that go around and like scour it. So they make sure they can take it off of like all these things. Like Reddit's a tough one. Reddit post stuff. Although I did get my Reddit taken down. So, which is great. Do you guys have subreddits? Do you have a snark subreddits? Oh yeah, there's a. Should we yeah. not talk about it? Unless you mentioned Reddit, it's like ah, like they all no, come back. No, it's you know we don't look at a lot of things, and then sometimes like things will come up. Uh, I've never they're, used. Reddit. They're like all like really yeah. creepy though. You know we know you don't want to know. About like them. Oh. bad creepy or some of them are like sexy creepy. There's like there's like uh like <laughs> I don't know. There's like message boards that are dedicated to like sexualizing the two of us oh. and yeah, like, I like taking, <laughs> photos, taking photos of like my legs oh, or like weird shit I mean it is weird but that's like not bad like I wish people I wish that was the worst of my Reddit <laughs> 
<laughs> Mine is so nasty. It's so scary. That's that's not bad. No, but but in some of them, what is what does alarm me is like people will talk about like how they see me out and about. Oh, and then that's like that. Then I get like weird. Like then that like call. You know what I mean? But you are Mister Out and About. You're very social. You're very that I, person. You're always out and about. Like that's you. But the weird thing is, I'm just like you know, I. I'm always with somebody now, like at a minimum. I get, yeah. I get recognized. Okay, I get. I, it's weird. Since being out with another person, less people will come up to me for sure. But more people look. Yeah. And then the second that like that person will go to the bathroom or leave, <laughs> yes. then it's like fair fucking game. Yes. And everybody comes, and it's like. And that's like really hard because I rather you say something yeah. than just feel your eyes on me because like I fucking know. Yes. Like, like going to the mall and like, but what's what, what I think is weird is the person I'm usually with doesn't know. Right. So it's only like I'm the one feeling <laughs> yeah. it because they're like going out and about and doing whatever, and I'm like, no, it's terrifying. Oh, it's really weird. That happened yeah, to us on our honeymoon yeah. in, in Hawaii. We went to the like resort that was like really like heavily. It's like a kid resort, like for teenage. I guess mm. a lot of teenagers were there, and so I had no idea. And it was like every day on TikTok, it was like from me from behind and me I was like oh my god it's so weird and it's the same when I'm out with Moses like not a lot of people come up to me as soon as he leaves it's like whew, like at the movie theater I remember you went to the bathroom when we were walking out and all of a sudden like literally like literally I'm not exaggerating like 30 people came up like in the movie theater in our little town and I was like what the hell it is weird I mean it's nice because obviously like I rely on people to like me and stuff like that but it's like at the same time like it's like yeah it's overwhelming and that's why if we went to my chemical romance together would just been so overwhelming we would have had to wear wigs <laughs> sunglasses <laughs> I was gonna wear a wig if we went I had a wig I had a beanie I was right Ready, but. <laughs> but, but then I was thinking maybe Gerard won't recognize me if I'm in a wig so I'm like I'll take it off <laughs> do you think you have any idea who you no. are no well no okay no yes oh wait yes okay so Whoa. oh my god okay so the directors of all the my the director of all the my chemical romance videos like iconic ones like Ghost of You <laughs> Helena I'm not okay I forgot his name damn he's a really big director damn it oh he's like a big director now he does like big movies he just did an interview and the interviewer like literally two months ago the interviewer asked him if he saw Sad Boy 2005 music <laughs> videos and he said no and then they showed it to him and he's like oh well I like admire her dedication she put a lot of work into this and I was like wow like the director of my chemical romance videos so I feel like he has but I definitely feel like Right, someone somewhere has to tell him. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm knowing Gerard and how he doesn't want to do like interviews. Not that I know him, but you know, he doesn't want to do interviews. I'm sure he's probably like, fuck, like this person's crazy. Like this is like one of those stands. So I, I, I don't think I'd, <laughs> I don't know if I'd even want to go because I don't want to scare him. Because a lot of people scare me, you know what I mean? And I feel like, okay, I don't want to scare him. And I thought maybe with like a baby and like a husband, maybe he wouldn't be as scared, but you know, still like he might be, I don't know. But I, I love him. And, um, and they always say, don't meet your idols. I feel like when you do meet people and they're just like not as like nice as, because in my head, we're like what? best friends and I'm sure that's not in his head <laughs> you know Quentin what I mean? Tarantino was your idol for a while and you met him right uh, yes and I love and he's so nice like of all the celebrities him and Eminem are like the nice it like very humble like the whole yeah. conversation with you like they're really nice he also married an Israeli I, I'm not pro Israel but I mean I'm not okay let me not get into that I'm not either one so don't come for me because I'll say my husband's Israeli and they're like free pals and I'm like okay I, I'm very I don't know I don't know enough about that situation please don't cancel me for that <laughs> cut it out whatever Trisha you need Paytas to do li- yeah we're gonna cut it out okay. but Trisha Paytas <laughs> literally thought New Zealand was a part of Australia yeah. <laughs> she is in no position to talk on any sort of no affairs. no I don't come for me for anything I don't know when people ask me about my politics I'm like I don't know anything about anything that's like Anna Nicole she said that she's like I know nothing about nothing that's me all the time I don't know anything don't come <laughs> but, for me there is a tweet going viral right now. It says, "Why doesn't anyone talk about the fact that Quentin Tarantino used to date Trisha Paytas?" Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, on Twitter right now. God, that's so funny. There's like a there's like two photos of us. One is clearly at a book signing. The other one is like <laughs> more like he's hugging me from behind. But I don't know where that came from. I never said it. I always loved him, but I never was like. Maybe at one point I was like, oh, I'm going to marry him. But I don't know where that came from. We did not. We didn't date. We definitely didn't date. He's always been, like, really nice, but never. And he's never been creepy. You know, like, most, like, a lot of celebrities try and, like, be, like, creepy and try and, like, whatever. But he's never creepy. He's always, like, super nice and just very um, humble. And I love him. I love Quentin. I wish he would have directed Elvis. Oh, God. Because he's such an Elvis fan. Like, that mm. would have been so iconic. I wish he would have done Were it. Were you disappointed in the movie? In the Elvis movie? Yeah. Yeah. No, I loved it. Why were you guys disappointed? No, I liked. I, I, t- no. The real tea is I fell asleep the first round. No, you didn't. A little bit. Like, what? Yeah, but like it was towards <gasps> the end. I fall asleep in movies sometimes. Really? But then I watch it again, and I was. Are in. you twenty nine or forty nine? Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elvis was Se- so sixty nine. Sixty. I know. Uh, speaking of that, what? Are still, you? Are still you a virgin? Yeah. I am still a virgin. Oh. Definitely. You know, I definitely you know suck dick and stuff. But uh, okay, def- so you're not a virgin. <laughs> 
No, but so key. That's you really interesting. You haven't been penetrated. No, yeah, no yeah, so, penetrated. so how okay. do you define a, a virgin? I think like any sexual act. Like if you've had a dick in your mouth, you're probably not a virgin. Oh, I've had a bunch of dicks <laughs> in my mouth, yeah. Bunch yeah, I don't dicks. think so. So yeah. I feel like, uh, okay, yeah. I thought you were dating someone. That's why I thought there was someone. Because no. you always take pictures with cute people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I've you know, I've nice looking people. Around yeah, me, no, always. Which is why nobody comes up to me. <laughs> right, because you always are with someone. Like at our wedding, you had a really good looking date. Because I didn't know, I usually knew everyone, and I didn't know him. I was like, this person is like, he's like a model. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like six five and gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Are you still talk to him? Uh, yeah, we're still friends. We Just friends. Yeah, we weren't like, um, you know. I mean, hookups. Like, you know. Hookups. Yeah. I want the world to think that, though. As, yeah, you know, you that have, person was gorgeous. Yeah, you always have gorgeous people. And at my party, too, you're like, oh, that person's gorgeous. I'm like, you should hang out with them. Oh, my God. I yeah. was hitting on somebody at your Halloween party. Yeah. I, you, had, you have good looking people in your life, too. Thanks. You really do. Yeah. I feel like everyone's good looking, though, right? Is there anyone truly ugly? It's mm, a, <laughs> a good point. Right? Am I the only one who thinks that? I really no. don't see ugly in people. Yeah. I never have though. I've never been one of those people who are like, oh, that person's ugly. Because like everyone is kind of like unique looking, right? I, Even like traditional good looking people to me aren't like, like Harry Styles, for instance, right? Is he considered like super hot? It's not that he's like unattractive, but I wouldn't say like he's hotter than you. You know what I mean? You're very oh, like, thank you. you're all have that. Because everyone has the same structure face. You all have eyes, nose, lips. Maybe his ringtone. Because it's Harry Styles, do you think he's like a gorgeous person or you just like his talent? Like, no, I honestly. Yeah, do we he's, think he's good looking or yes. we told people I'm, are good looking? I'm right. I'm That's what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you right now, I've looked in his eyes uh, very deeply, one-on-one, a couple different times. We've shared shots together I, in his eyes. Yeah, he's I got get a lot lost. Of it is crazy. Really? Is... Wait, with Harry Styles? Yeah. You like, got lost in his eyes before? Yeah, like three times. Oh, my God. That's tea. Have you ever talked about it? Well, yeah, you know, here we go. <laughs> well, the, the first time I ever like had a real one-on-one interaction with him, and we knew each other at the time, he came in to a party and I was there and he smelled my drink, threw it in the trash, <gasps> and then he said, give him one of what I'm give- having, and then I didn't know what it was, and I'm looking this person in the eyes, and we take a shot, and I don't know what it is, and it ends up being this insane like tequila, and I almost projectile vomit on him. Oh. Was um, he into it or no? Uh, you know, I, uh, no. <laughs> was he like, <laughs> no? No, was no he, but we was, did have, we, we've had moments since. Was it a bad impression? Was he like, oh, this guy that no, puked no, on me? No, no, no? no, no. he's I, fine? I did gag, though, and you could see in my face. Like, I don't hide uh, alcohol. Yeah, you're fun. Drinking of that very well. But you're fun drunk. I've seen I you am. drunk at my parties, and this is fun. <laughs> I love it. You are you were like the last person to leave the Halloween party, I think Fuck it was. Yeah, you were like a group of guy or group of yeah. people, and I was just like, and you guys are like the last people. You're like, I love you, I love you. I was like, okay, I'm going to go inside. Like, yeah. have fun, party. <laughs> <laughs> you were living, but I love it. You live your best life. Like I truly love that about you. Like I wish I could like live my best life more. That's kind of like well, everything. Now you as a mom will find a balance between yeah. going out and being social, and also being true and freaking being focused on raising a child that yeah. is a genuine extension of yourself. I mean, because the truth is, before her, I never went out anyways. You know what I mean? I was yeah. always like a homebody. Like, I think you now really I'm like, were. oh, I should go. Yeah. Like, literally the only thing I've ever wanted to do was go to, like, My Chemical Romance. That was it. And that was, that was like, the only thing. Everything else I don't care about. You know what I mean? I'll still go to Australia. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's go to Australia I'm for down it. to do okay. that. But, do like, really don't ghost go? me when I get no, there. I, sister. <laughs> I'm in, like, Wait, <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> You want to go to Australia? <laughs> I keep thinking you have a surprise back there. Like, I think Gerard Way's back there. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's, like, coming out. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I would die. Um, anyway, I know every time we come on here, we just talk about him. But he's really the only person that I, like, think about besides my husband and child. <laughs> it's Gerard. <laughs> I just love him. But I know that's 100% the truth. Yeah, it's just oh, so good. Do you, are you still obsessed with Hello Kitty at all? Do you have your collection still? No. You got rid of it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I got rid of all of it. I feel like I was trying to like grow up from that, and now I'm like reverting back to it. Really? I like Hello Kitty, though. I'm like down. I would love to do, like, I used to be like, I used to do like Japanese-inspired music. Like, I used to have like this whole pop star performance persona called like pop star Trishy and she was like this Japanese ganguru girl but then everyone thought I, they, they were canceling me because they thought it was like blackface or something but it was like this like trend of Japanese girls granted I shouldn't have done that either like it's another one of the things where I'm like okay it's stupid I shouldn't have done that but it was like this trend of like Japanese girls like wearing like tan faces with like white eyes and stuff and so I did it and then everyone canceled me but I love Japanese culture I love like Hello Kitty I love the whole culture I want to go I would love to go to Tokyo that's on my list too oh it'd be so great have you been to anywhere <laughs> Yeah, have you left California? <laughs> I've traveled. I've been, I, yeah, I used to travel a lot. Like, I used to go to, like, you know, Europe, Greece. I mean, I've been to Iran. How many people can say that? Uh, I've been yeah. to Tehran, you know what I mean? Shiraz, I've been to, like, so I've been, yeah, I've traveled. And I had, like, a year of it. I had, like, a year of, like, traveling. But I would love to travel more. 
We went to the Maldives for our honeymoon, which I was super scared because you're not supposed to do porn there or something. So I really thought we were going to get like arrested or something like that because I was like, oh man, like, but I've traveled. I like it. I don't know. But I also just love California. I really do. Yes. Wait, well, you have to go to India now, though, because you're making a Bollywood movie. <gasps> I want to go to India. I'm manifesting that. So if I won the Mega Millions, which is tonight, okay, I play every, every, every <laughs> Tuesday, many, Friday. How many tickets do you buy? I buy $20 worth. So it's like 10 numbers. Mm-hmm. And I buy them Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Fridays. And I buy them like every, every week because I go really. To the same place? Yes. King Tobacco. You have to have <laughs> routine. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I go there and I get it. And yeah, I would love, like if I won, I would like, you know, there's a house in our neighborhood with pool slides. I'd get that. But I'd also want to make a Bollywood film. <laughs> I want to make a Bollywood film. I love Bollywood films so much. And I want to, I, I just want to do that. Like that's my goal. And I'd also go over there and like open up like houses for like people, like ki- people that are in sex work that don't want to be and like, you know, house them. I want to do all that stuff. So I want to go to India. I've always had a calling. We almost went there. Like I was looking into adoption over there. I still would. I still would really love to adopt from India. Like, I mean, there's so many countries, great countries to adopt from, but like for some reason I always had like a calling to India. I just like, I don't know what it is. I've always felt like a pull to it. Haven't been, but I'm a huge, uh, I, I love the culture. I love the music. I love all of it. I think it's like so great. Are you a cultural appropriator or appreciator? Appreciator. And this is like so annoying. Not you, but I just like in general, people are like, oh, she's appropriating cultures. Especially when I was like do- going through my spiritual journey last year. Like I went through a deep spiritual journey. So it was like going to the Hare Krishna temple, but also going, you know, to like different, just different, visiting different like religious like houses and stuff like that. And people thought, even Wiccan, like I really like started st- studying like pagan, like all of that stuff like that. Because that's like natural religion. Like w- like Wiccan is like nature's religion, right? It's like the elements of the mm. earth. It's like wind, fire, like all that stuff, you know, and I really got into that. But everyone just thought it was like, you know, because I was so excited about it, you know, I would start buying like all this stuff, like, I, you know, black salt for protection. And like, oh, she's like appropriating it or whatever. So it's the same thing with my husband's culture. Like, I really respect like Judaism. Like, I don't, I didn't convert. And so, like, it was really, really tough. But I love like learning Hebrew. I love like learning all of that stuff, like Hanukkah, all the things like that. Um, but I, yeah, people just like, think you're appropriating I guess like because it's me I think it's because it's me I feel like if anyone else were to do it it would be I don't know because like Indian culture like and anytime you go visit these countries by the way they like you know they like that you embrace their culture yeah. right you know I feel like it's like a I never no one ever looks at me like funny if you like you know go to like I don't know France and buy like you know buy something that's like you know a beret or something you know whatever <laughs> I know it sounds like appropriating but it's like you know they're excited that you want to like share their culture Kiwi Jacob you've been to 48 different countries can you agree <laughs> with this you can talk him. You can speak through. It will work. He's not um, listening. Mind, but he does agree. Yeah, I guess he does. He. Yeah. He's young. How old is he? Twenty four. Whenever I see young people, it's like I really do feel old. It's funny. I never feel old until I see like young people. I was like, whoa, it's crazy. What, were you, what, do you really feel old? I think when it just like you see young people or like you know realize how young people are. Like you guys had um, was it Lauren Gray on your show shortly after I was on last yeah. time, and she had said something that I like talked like made maybe like made fun of her or something on front of me. I felt so bad. I was like, mm-hmm. oh my god, why am I picking on like this like a little girl? Like she's not a little girl. She's like a young woman. But I felt so bad. I was like, oh my god, I look so embarrassing. It's like when Wendy Williams would come for people, and you're just like, oh, you're <laughs> embarrassing. You're like this old like person <laughs> i was gonna say something like not nice but like you know like i i can say about myself like i don't want to be this old hag like coming for like little kids you know what i mean like trying to like make it in this world so um you know i had to like reevaluate same thing with like charlie d'amelio dixie d'amelio i'd like clown on her music and i'm like why why was i doing that i was such a hater i was such a hater and i felt so bad and like i'm also old and i'm like that's even more embarrassing because if you're a certain age doing that you're like oh stop you know are you still talking to shane dawson at all no, no, I haven't talked to him. Did he not reach out over the birth of Malibu Barbie? No, we haven't. We haven't talked. Um, which is like, I mean, it's understandable. We don't. We didn't talk before that, so it's always that weird thing. But um, no, yeah. Huh. I mean, it's like it's sad. What is that? Uh, just us not talking. No, I mean, even him. What is? What is that? I don't know. I feel like they're again. I feel. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think I was like really hurt by stuff. I don't really know how he feels because we've never talked about it, you know, but I was definitely hurt by some things. And again, I let I let things go. I'm very easy to forgive, like forgive people. But I also know like I'm the problem in a lot of these things. So like I understand if people like are not willing to like forgive me because I feel like there was definitely this time where I was like really annoyed and I was very like, you know, I had a smart mouth on me and stuff and I like would say nasty things. So I like understand it. You know what I mean? But yeah. And I also feel like, you know, you stop talking to someone and it's like, that's just life. Like some people you're just not even meant mm-hmm. to talk to again. Sure. And maybe what I'm like that one person who like, I'll like always talk to someone and be cool with them. But I don't know. I also give people their space, especially when I'm like, if I'm, I'm the problem most of the time in my past relationships and friendships. So I usually just give people space and, you know, if it comes around, it comes around, but I don't know. 
I, I don't know. Do you feel like you lost anything in that friendship? Yeah, I feel like every like relationship or friendship, you're like, damn, you know, I kind of lost some, you know, he lost a really good friend. I feel like Shane was like, we were really, really close. Um, but sometimes there is just too much like bad blood and it's just like, you know, sometimes like <sighs> past me was like, you know, I wouldn't like, I would, you know, I wouldn't just like burn a bridge. I'd like burn the whole town down. You know what I mean? I'd just yeah. like set, like make sure like it would like put like an atom bomb on it and like blow up everything. Like, you know, I just, I used to be like really just that person. So um yeah it's been i understand i lost a lot of friendships and probably some good ones maybe not some maybe some toxic ones but like yeah it sucks it kind of sucks but are there is there any part of you now that you're a mom you can see those relationships and the burning of those towns through a different lens that maybe you want to go back and try to reconcile yeah but that's what i was saying it's like yeah of course oh my god like i would you know i've apologized people and they've accepted i've apologized people and they don't accept it but i again it's like i think it's more on like their time because i feel like i have said it in like videos and stuff like if I feel bad about a situation or something but I'll say it now anyone that I burn bridges with like I like apologize for any of my wrongdoing because I know I was the problem like I said like 99% of the time but um yeah I don't know and you know when someone hurts you there's certain people like you know you hurt someone deep they're not gonna like forgive you so I don't know I don't know the situation with us too like I mean I feel like it is relatively surface level but maybe it's more deeper for them and stuff mm. which I respect too but for me I mean most of the stuff is like surface level stuff but you don't care about sucks. you don't care about David Dobrik though like as a person as a human I mean I, I don't want him to like die I like I care about him as a human have you tried Dobrik's the pizza place yeah no have you guys no <laughs> Loki I wanted to but so also I'm like eh, yeah yeah but it's not is it getting good reviews I don't think so right I don't know no I mean good for him I think it's cool I was like well that's cool you know open up a pizza shop I don't know I have you know again it's like that situation it's like yeah, no I don't know didn't you get them no. VIP for what was the band oh my God, we saw I saved you guys at AJR AJR are they still around yeah. I don't know anything I love them <laughs> they're great I don't I know literally, you guys went to the show you're in you're in like general admission <laughs> we waited I'm, in line <laughs> uh, yeah I was like yeah. what the fuck which is fine I'm like we're humble queens over here like it was fine I didn't know the band, like his kids, like the band or something like that. I didn't know who they were, but I know it was more just like, I don't know. And then he saw you. Actually, I left, I think. I think I left. You you may have. Well, I brought you guys upstairs. I don't think oh. I went up. I think I was gone before. Well, I tried to get you away from the crowd. Um, yeah. And then I did bring maybe Jason and his kids back yeah, to meet them. Yeah, you did. Because after I left, I remember they, they had said something. I think I just made it through the opening act. I don't even think I was, I don't even think I saw it. <laughs> A-R-J, A-R, AJR, AJR. Love AJR, but I, just, I didn't see them. I just love the fact that, that you all went to the show and it was just, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Down goes the presents. The best. Oh, fuck. <laughs> anyway. I just yeah. love that you were all there just in, in GA and I was like, <laughs> I just had my all access pass and I was like sure I'll help you I would have gone GA to uh, is that G- is that stand for general admission yes. yeah I would have gone to GA uh, for M- MCR but I uh, <laughs> but I just didn't want to get sick because of my daughter so I was trying to like avoid lines and stuff I'm not like a I'm not like above it or anything but I just you know oh yeah I am if there's perks yeah like I know you so but then he also felt, can I, can I, tell you, I felt guilty too because I was like I don't want to think I'm just like hitting him up to be no, like I, MCR is in town but like, see now that I'm now I am kind of pissed I really thought I had texted you back because I was able to get forum club passes <laughs> and they were under my name and your name Zach uh, you why had, didn't you text me. So, I was ready to go. So Forum Club is like a, it's like a side VIP area. It, it's like food and drinks, and uh, it's really nice. It's near the dressing room, so you can get in and out really quickly. Uh, and, man, I'm so sad. But they're gonna be, we're gonna go to Australia. Are we actually? Are you? I'm down this? to do this. Well, I, I, we've been th- trying to bring the show to different parts of the world. Okay. So like, if Australia is the place we go because of My Chemical Romance, yes. So do you so think you can it. interview him there? I mean, I'm going to reach out, baby. Yeah. I'll, I mean, I'm going to go. BTS comes on our show. Why can't Gerard Way give us 10 minutes? Because Gerard Way is like I know. God. You I know, know what I mean? BTS is like Prince or something. You know what I mean? So that's like an equivalent there. There's like God and then there's Prince and Michael Jackson. You know, like I feel like he's God. <laughs> no, no blasphemous though. I, I love God. I love the real God, you know? <laughs> oh, God is an, an awesome, awesome God. He reigns from heaven uh, above with, with, with me. <laughs> Some power in my God is an awesome God. Hey. I love God. I love Christian music. Maybe I should go back to it. <laughs> go back? You were there? Yeah. I had a whole oh, Christian oh, I love album. I did the Jesus song. That's but right. even after right, Jesus right. song, I did a couple little Christian songs and stuff like that. I did Hebrew songs last year. I just like to go. That's why I want to do like Bollywood. I did I Love You Jesus. I did I Love You Moses. I want to do I Love You Krishna because now I'm a Hare Krishna. So I just want to do like this whole Bollywood inspired video for it <laughs> and just sing because Krishna, I mean, they're all the same, right? Like Christ, Krishna, all this is like the same. So it's kind of like I want to do a, 
a little tribute to my Krishna. But do we have enough money to no. fund these endeavors <laughs> and take care of Malibu? No. Our fucking kids' Maserati. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we had to do. <laughs> I sold the Birkin for that Maserati. I, I, I'm an economical mom, so like if, I, if there's a thirty-two thousand dollar Maserati, I'll sell my Birkin for one hundred and fifty thousand. So you know, I'm, I'm, I do balance because I'm not like I don't know. There's this misconception that I'm like this baller. You know what I mean? I feel like do good, but I'm not like balling. Like I gotta work because people are like, if you're so rich, why are you doing OnlyFans? I'm like, I'm like, I make money because of OnlyFans. I'm like, rich I, because I, of yeah, OnlyFans. I can't stop. Like I mean, it's not like we're just you know. One day when I win the Mega Millions. And when I win the Mega Millions, you know what else I want to do? I want to do a show like this. You know, maybe I'll buy the Zach Sang show. Please, you can buy. Yeah. It. For How much? I, I mean, we'll, cheap. we'll talk about it. <laughs> I had to talk to Jeff Bezos first and get you out of your Amazon contract. <laughs> That's the tea. <laughs> That's the tea. I love Jeff Bezos. I don't know anything about him. Maybe I don't. Is he considered not good? Like, no, he's, he's, okay, yeah, he is. He's a good guy. Yeah. Because some people like group him and Elon Musk together as like bad. I don't know anything about any of them. Well, so I, I think billionaires naturally get like a, a stigma. Right. You know, because they're billionaires. Yeah. Is Elon Musk a billion? I guess he is a billionaire, huh? Yeah. Like What's he so rich from? SpaceX. Tesla. Tesla. Oh. That is Twitter. I wonder if PayPal. people... Oh. He... Wait, what? He owns yeah, PayPal? PayPal was... He what? started, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Oh. I believe so. Bougie. Um, interesting. I wonder if people who like don't like him now that he's conservative, I wonder if they like are all selling their Teslas. They're like, fuck Tesla now. I've been thinking about it. You have a Tesla? Yeah, I do. Wait, and are you... I'm a liberal. And so you don't like you're anti Elon Musk? No, I'm like um I'm actually I don't I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah, the middle. That's what I see you care. as. Yeah, because I feel like I don't know the difference between anything, but I feel like, you know, like liberal social issue. I'm I don't know. I'm nothing. I'm honestly nothing. Don't come for me. I don't know anything. But I feel like there's people who can be like a little bit liberal, a little bit conservative, like, you know. Uh, at I mean? the end of the day, I do believe that like not like free speech shouldn't be limited, but at the same time you can't yell fire in a building that's not on fire yeah and you know free speech has consequences when what you're saying is inciting violence or for sure yeah spreading false information that can lead to violence yeah. or whatever it may be so I, I i do believe in the fact that like facts are facts are facts are facts and does he not say facts I think I don't know anything. he has a different interpretation of free speech to a certain degree. Mm. But by the way, like I, I, that's all changing. Like he reinstated Kanye West, and then Kanye West tweeted something and was thrown off uh, immediately after. Yeah, so. Kanye. Did, was he supposed to come on this show? Because I heard he was supposed to make the rounds to like podcasts and stuff. Like Oof. we never I, had talks, but we talked about like should we ask or should we allow it? And we were like maybe. And then he made those comments, and we're like, all right, now we want yeah. to do with that. I know. I feel like there's no coming back from that. That's kind of like scary. But you well, said there's no I, coming back, and I feel like there is coming back. I feel like he'll take a year off. He'll put out yeah. an album, and everyone's gonna no. be a Kanye but that's, fan. But again. that's the thing. That's like David too. It's like there'll always be fans. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like there's always fans of like the worst people. Like, there's really no, what you know, Mel Gibson, you know, like all those people. Not that, I don't know if, I don't know what he did was so bad. I mean, I don't know. But I feel like everyone comes back. Except mm-hmm. maybe Woody Allen. I feel like he's kind of canceled now, right? Yeah, people? Bill Cosby, too. Yeah, there's really no coming back from those kind of things. Matt Lauer from the Today Show. Right. He got canceled, canceled, huh? But I, I do think that what we're going to find with Kanye West is that he's going to actually run for office. So, this is not crazy. a phase. No, he's, he's going like, to, bro, we're about to head into a primary and we're we're about to head into a season where the Republicans are going to decide on their candidates and the Democrats are going to decide on theirs and nominate people and there's going to be a general election and we're going to vote for a new president in the next year, 2024, we're doing this thing. So he's going to run. Yeah, He's going to try to run as a conservative, as a member of the Republican Party. And if he gets on the debate stage while he's being led and influenced by Nazis. And, oh my God. Uh, d- d- they are. I don't know, I, I, I they all are. Yikes. Everybody on that team, man, are famous neo-Nazis, so. I know, because he does have like that dark energy about him now. It's kind of well, sucks. Well, and by the way, the dark energy is fueled solely by this want to have power and to have control and to yeah. essentially be famous and a way to be lasting famous because I think that really, honestly, the sales or the, the streams on his music not the best, and he's not really rich from music, honestly. Yeah, he's rich Kanye from. Had, if Kanye just stuck to Adidas, stuck to his clothes, and stuck to making music, he'd be rich and famous. Right. As fuck. Yeah, but money is not enough for people like that. Yeah. Like this is a different kind power. of fame and power mm-hmm. and control, and he really thinks that what he believes and has to say, from what he's been given through music and art and fashion, whatever, 
it has the ability to influence policy and shape the world. And he's being influenced again by neo-Nazis who are telling him that he can be president of the United States. Right. If Donald Trump can do it, so can Kanye West. And that is so, so dangerous. And and even the comments he's made over the last few a couple months have stoked so much hatred locally in Los Angeles yeah. and in, in Jewish communities yeah. all across this nation. It really is alarming and we should be on guard. Yeah. We should be. It's terrifying. It is scary. Yeah. I think he just wants attention and we should pay no attention to it. I know. Even talking about it now, mm. I was like, uh, I know. Because that's how yeah. you like get rid of a troll is like stop paying attention stop to paying a attention. troll and stuff. Yeah. And that, he's like, that's yeah. really how you cancel someone. Right. You just stop talking about them and no more fuel to their fire. Yeah. I wish more people would do that. But the, 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 that's the other thing. It's like it's you can't help but talk about it because it's so like ridiculous. I know. It's you, that yeah cycle. Like, can you believe that Kanye West is a Nazi? No. <laughs> just that headline right, right, <laughs> right there, which right. is pure fact. He's so crazy that you have to discuss. Yeah. Well, can we switch to something a bit lighter? Will <laughs> yes. Trisha Paytas ever be a real housewife of Beverly Hills? <laughs> oh, or Calabasas. Or Calabasas. Yeah, that would be everything. Um, I, I used to say no because I was like, oh, I don't want to be like an old lady like in the drama or something like that. But, you know, I, I, I'm down for it. I think I'd bring the drama back if I was a real housewife. I feel like I totally would. I would love to. I think that'd be so fun. I you, think, yeah, why not? I don't know. I think I'd be good on that show. I don't really... I've never seen the show. Never seen it. But, um... Yeah, I feel like I would like bring life into that show. Is it popular? It's popular still, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Oh. I was yeah, with all of them the other night at the People's Choice Awards. With all the housewives? Yeah, they were all there. Erica Jane was there. Oh. She's stolen money from old people allegedly. Yeah, how's she doing? <sighs> I love her. Has she been on the show? She's a she's an artist. She's a pop star. <laughs> It's expensive to be me. <laughs> I love it. You know her song? No. No. Wait, you don't know any of her music? It's such a bob. Lisa Rinna was there. Oh, Kathy Lisa. Hilton was putting uh, lip gloss on behind Mershka Argate oh my while God. she was giving her oh, speech. Oh, my gosh. Wait, so did you guys both go? Yeah. Did you like it? Did you guys have fun? Why'd you uh, guys go? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Or were you invited? I don't know. <laughs> no, like, no, I get invited no. to nothing, so I don't know. Is that were true? you invited? Yeah, oh my God, I don't go anywhere. What's the last thing you got invited to? Nothing. I've literally never been invited to one award show. Are you serious? No. I think I went to one Streamies with David, like the group. They made fun of you at the Streamies this year. I was like, that's I know. a terrible fucking joke. No, it was so stupid. And I love when people talk about me because I'm like, oh, wow, I'm like relevant or whatever. But it was so bad. Like, I was just like, oh my God. I was like, Trisha Paytas sweating during labor. I was like, what is that? For? It's not even like, what is it? Well, what does like, it yeah. mean? Well, she's, what? she's giving birth. I was like, yeah, she's <laughs> sweat. What do you expect? It was really bad. That joke was really the bad. Streamies are total shit. Did you, you go? Went, no, but I, I yeah. they mentioned the host. Didn't know that host for a fucking whole. Who is wall. it? Do we know? I mean, obviously we someone. Who is it? Do we know? Arik Arnick. Eric. I only know. I only Nune. saw it because when I was looking you up, I saw he made a joke about you. Yeah. And I was like, that joke's not funny. Yeah, it was really bad. The whole internet kind of collectively agreed with that. They're kind of like, this is like, even people who hate me are like, oh, it's kind of weird. It's yeah. kind of a weird joke. Show was shit. Looked like shit. Yeah, I don't even get invited to those though. So that's what I'm saying. I get invited to literally nothing. Yeah. I've never been invited. You're, you're not missing anything. <laughs> okay. You usually don't get invited. Uh, Were you nominated? No, no. We got invited to this one. Well, to be honest, I, I used to. We, I've done like I've hosted the pre-shows for a couple different award shows. Oh, really? So I'll usually get invited to work. I won't get like invited to like sit there. Well, that's everything. I wish I was invited to work. I see like TikTokers get to go to like the Elvis premiere and like oh, yeah, those you are know? the people who have taken all of our jobs. Yeah, know? they've like, given them to like fucking you know TikTokers. Emily Uribe and Chris Olson. Yes. Yeah. Okay, they went to the Elvis premiere, and I was like, wait. Ha, like I love, I love Chris. I don't know the other one. What's her name? Emily. Oh no, I know the other one. Emily. Emily Uribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but I was like, n like no shade. Like so happy for them. Like honestly, wish that was me. Like so jealous. It's all coming out of jealousy. It's like, how do they get invited? Like how do they get that? They just have a manager or something. <laughs> I never had a manager. I need a manager. I need all. No, I don't. I don't want one. But like I. Maybe should and get in these things. Well, I don't know. they have like fans over at TikTok that like nominate them for j different gigs. I have a fan at TikTok that keeps my TikTok alive. When people try to like mass report my TikTok, like there's a fan over there that keeps me alive over there, which is because I don't break any of the rules, but people try and like get me in trouble. Really? I'm very wholesome. I'm very good on TikTok. I try not to like break any rules over there, but I have like a fan that works at TikTok and it's like, it's pretty cool. It's cool now because like there are people who watch my videos and stuff that work at like, you know, cool companies. Like I have like a show next year coming, like we're filming it next year. And I'm like, oh, it's cool because I got it because there was a person that was like a fan that's like a higher up there. And I was like, wow, that's so which, cool. Is it a reality show? And, and no, it's like a docu series kind of show. For what? Um, I can't say. I, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it because you know what happens <laughs> is like troll, like the subreddits and stuff will start like at mentioning them. Like this person's this. She's an anti semite. Like just no, like say bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, if it happens, I'll like you know. Knock I mean, on think that it's... log. Manifest it right here. What is this log for? It's a magic log. Actually, it's a good piece of wood. Do you man? <laughs> do you manifest? Are you a manifester? I do. I do too. 
I, did, I was manifesting before I knew what manifestation was. Same. I talk about this all the time. Yeah. What were you manifesting? Being I, on the radio? My whole life. Yeah. Everything in my life I've manifested and hoped for and seen and then through that energy and that focus I've put into action. When you only visualize it like it happens like yeah. all the time. It's like so. That, I tell that to Crazy. everybody. People are like, mm, like, no, but like literally I do believe anything. I used to like pretend to take pictures with people like when I was a little kid. Like I used to try to pr- like, I had, like pretend I had fans and stuff like that. And like literally now all the time like people just come up and take pictures with me and I was like, wow, that's <laughs> crazy i manifested that because i literally became like someone someone wants pictures with for nothing like you know what i mean like i don't do I anything it. and it's great it's been amazing i used to use 411 do you remember that like 411 to get like a, somebody's phone number oh yeah 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 yeah. i used to call 411 and try to get like celebrities phone numbers when i was younger i love that did you call anyone did you I, get anyone i got regis philbin one time oh how was he well at least i think it was i don't know <laughs> Probably what? <laughs> no fucking chance they're giving out that number. That would have been everything. Did he talk? Did he talk to you? Yeah. Really? Yeah, but I think he totally made me pull up my fucking leg. <laughs> That's everything. I love. I love that. I used to do that too. I used to write to people when I was a kid. I'd like find celebrity addresses and write to them. And um, yeah, I heard back from some. I mean, we talked about it before. We yeah. talked about like Michael Jackson stuff when I go to his house. And stuff. I mean, that was more like creepy than manifesting. But <laughs> <laughs> don't go to people's houses. I had bad karma from that. People coming to my house, and I'm like, damn it! <laughs> what comes around goes around. That's the lesson right there. If you put out negativity, you get negativity back. If you go to someone's house and creepy stalk them, you'll get creepy stalkers right back. So don't do it. It's not cute. <laughs> and that's life lesson. Yes. <laughs> Take that with you. Speaking yeah. of manifestation, is that what you're doing, or is this a joke? When you tweet like excited to start filming the fifth and final season of Stranger Things, and you're on your way to Japan to film a. Uh, what is it? The White, White Lotus, Lotus season, season three. three. <laughs> no, those are true. Those are not manifestations. Those are facts. <laughs> That's happening. <laughs> I talked to Mike White. We're on it. Yeah, it's <laughs> those are happening. But like the thing is, in like my mind, I feel like I should be on those shows. I don't know why I'm not. Like I feel like I would add to each of those shows so much. What would you I add think to happen? Your- <laughs> I only watched season four. I never watched the first three seasons. What? Yeah. <laughs> I only watched the last one. Because <laughs> it was all over TikTok. People were talking about, what's that guy's name? Eddie Munson. Everyone was talking about him. So I'm like, oh, let me watch this. And people were like, oh, no, you have to watch the first three seasons to get it. I'm like, no, you don't. Like, literally, I understood what was happening. I got it. <laughs> people try to, like, gatekeep that. Like, you have to watch all three seasons to get it. I'm like, no. <laughs> I totally got it. But I could have so been on that show. I just don't understand why I'm not on these things. Because, like, on if I'm being honest, I, like, always wanted to be an actress. But then I started, like, the opposite of manifesting. I started being like, no, I'm a bad actress. I'm this. You know, I'd always put that out there. And so then I stopped like, you know, trying and stuff and then I didn't get roles. But now I feel like, no, I'm a really good actress. Like, I feel like I should be on these things. So that's what I do on my ASMR channel. I like act out these TV shows so people can see my <laughs> acting skills and cast me. It's going to happen. Watch. I'm going to be on White Lotus season three. So what, you recreate scenes but in soft speaking voices? Yeah. Yeah. And I do like, I did a whole, I'm so behind. Like, this is what I'm telling you. I'm like a boomer. I did like a whole, like, when I was pregnant, I watched Lost. And I was like, Lost is so good. So I started like recreating all the lost scenes and thinking it's going to come back and like J.J. Abrams is going to cast me on a reboot of it. <laughs> so I did. I dressed up as all the characters and because I was pregnant I was Hurley. Even not pregnant I'm Hurley. You know what I mean? I'm like I was Hurley. Had my husband be Saeed who I love. Naveen Andrews is my favorite person ever but I was like doing all these cosplays and hope that somebody will see it and it hasn't worked yet but manifestation doesn't always happen overnight. It can take time so. <laughs> Give it another 15 years. Yes. You're on this Honestly I could be. You know, it's about oh, consistency. Yeah for sure. Sure. I feel like some people get their break when they're like 60 years old. You know sure. what I mean? I feel like that could be me. Hopefully it's sooner. Hopefully I'm like, you know, but this, new Mari- this new Mariah Carey, Mar- what's her name? Mariah Mar- Carey. <laughs> this new Mariah Carey biopic. That could be all you. Oh my God. Yes. I think I tweeted that too, that you I was going to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could be her. I could be her for sure. I'm sure she would see this and be like, oh my God, she's happy. But I can lose weight. You know what I mean? Like I could be Mariah Carey. The only thing is, I don't know if I could. Sing. No, fuck it. I could do the vocals. No, <laughs> I have to say, I can do it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the present underneath the Christmas tree. Does that like her? <laughs> I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Make my dreams come true. All I want for Christmas is you. That's amazing. Thank you. Malibu loves it. (laughs) Malibu's like, what the fuck was that? Malibu loves my singing because I sing so much with her and now she loves it. She loves it. Oh, 
all our so Christmas much. decorations are <laughs> falling. <laughs> that was given a little Britney Spears. I heard a little Britney oh, in there. Oh, thank you. That yes. just comes natural, my Britney. <laughs> That's just my natural voice. <laughs> oh, no. <shit>. She... <laughs> I am a good singer. I thought that was great. Thank you. I mean, that was way better than I thought I was going to say. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the other thing. I feel like I used to be a good singer, but I kept telling everyone how shitty I was. And I feel like I could be like, okay, but now like it's always in my head that I'm a bad singer. So I'm like, it's, I'm a bad singer. It's fine. No, whatever. No, we need but... to turn that narrative around. Right. I'm a really good singer. I'm still convinced I'll be on Broadway. Like, I feel like it'll happen. <sighs> I feel, I, I mean... Erica Jane was on Broadway. Yeah, if you she know. can do it. I mean, You're yeah. better than her. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm better was than she her. in but... Chicago? Yeah. Everyone plays Roxy. Yeah. It's like you don't have to be a good singer to play Roxy. Like, Pamela Anderson just did it, and I love Pam. I'm a huge fan. I, yeah. I didn't hear her sing. I don't know if she can sing, but I thought that was iconic that she did it. That's I, that's a hard thing to do, Broadway. Eight shows a week. I know. I think I could do it. Fuck yeah, you can. Yeah, I could. Manifest that. Hit the log. <laughs> Here we go. What else are we manifesting? Gerard Way interview. <laughs> Gerard Way interview. We're manifesting. Uh, you, uh, new Lottery. Show, Lottery. Lottery. Harry Styles. Movie. Harry Styles, yes. Yeah. He's single, right? Maybe you should date him. Yeah, just broke up with Olivia Wilde. <laughs> I would he, did? he was dating Olivia Wilde? Yeah, you, Where oh. the hell have you been? <laughs> She's pregnant, <laughs> just in my own world, the, in Madura. The, the real tea, though, what? is I didn't talk about this on the show. She was giving me the craziest eyes. Oh, God, Zach. Olivia Wilde at <laughs> the People's just, Choice Awards. She's like, you're trying to take my man. No, she kept staring at me what like she knew me. And like, I was like, mm. I, all I kept looking at her goes, I was thinking, who is this woman? You didn't One, know? Why is she still looking at me? <laughs> and two, who the fuck are you? <laughs> what? Do you not and know then, her? No. And then I see her get out to like go like accept an award. I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. That that woman was looking at me really <laughs> intensely. Yeah, I heard she. Swear to God. Yeah, I heard she was like reptilian or something, right? Like one of those <laughs> reptilian people. Yeah. What? Wait, what? Yeah, is that a thing? Like she thinks she's a lizard? No, there's like reptilian people. I don't want to get into it because I don't know. It's like a conspiracy no, thing. Teach but me. yeah, I think like Miley Cyrus is like reptilian. There's like reptilian people. They're like part of the Illuminati or something. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't want anyone to come for me. Jesus. <laughs> Have you ever been contacted contacted by the Illuminati? No. Do you think it's real? I don't think it's real. David, that's one of the David Dobrik things that he'll like die on. He's like, somebody came up to me and asked if I was if oh, I wanted to be yeah. a part of the Illuminati. Uh, shut the fuck up. I don't think it's real, right? It's not. No, I mean, no. I mean, at least I have friends. If it was, we wouldn't know. You guys haven't been asked. No, but like I think <laughs> like some of my friends would have been asked. Here's what I yeah. do know is that there are like really powerful group chat, yeah. text message threads of really powerful people that like. We'll put their heads together, and over the pandemic, we're, like, hanging out on Zoom, like, twice a week, and they'd invite, like, other, like, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton would just, like, show up to their Zoom hang, and that was, like, a bunch of really famous, powerful people. I'm talking about, like, maybe 30 of them. Oh. And they they ranged in, like, who they were. Mm. I can't, I don't want to name names. Yeah. Like we said Bill Clinton. Well, incredibly <laughs> eclectic, and Bill and Hillary definitely came in. For like a chat or two. They're not canceled, right? <laughs> no. Okay. I, I like so. Bill and Hillary. Yeah. I'm a fan. I watched Me the too. American Impeachment show. It was good. I, I loved it. That was good. Do you have Beanie Feldstein on ever? I wish. She's great. So talented. Poor thing with Funny Girl. Everyone was just like crushing her so hard. And then Lee Le- 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 Michelle came on. I was like, Leah. And I was like, oh my God. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't be canceled because Leah was so canceled. She came back. I was like, we love her. She couldn't even read. Now look at her. <laughs> <laughs> See the magic of TikTok. I love their whole like bar. The way people come up with stuff is so funny. See, to me. Trisha Paytas, like we're doing like a year end review here. Right. Like, we're we're kind of going through. <laughs> this be an annual thing? Yeah. Trisha just has no idea what happened that year. We just fill her in. <laughs> I'm watching Lost. I'm like, Lost is great. <laughs> Check that show out. <laughs> Debuted in the year 2006. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I had a Lost podcast this year. I did like a whole like 12 series podcast on Lost. <laughs> I you, love it. How you know she had way too much time on her hands. <laughs> Literally, I was just secluded watching Lost. Uh, this is why, yeah. All your competitive podcasts came out in 2008. <laughs> yeah. I was the number one Lost podcast in 2022. So. <laughs> the, the first new one in about 10 and a half years. It's great. That show's great. I'm a huge fan <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. I, I was about to say, yeah. if you want to check in on Trisha Paytas and fo- follow what she's doing, we'll put links in the description below. Yay. But also, like, I'm sure you kn- you know already. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> no, my relevancy has gone down, but, like, I'm ready to climb back up. You know what I mean? I'm ready to be here again. Starts today. Yeah, today, <laughs> right now. <laughs> new year, new Trish. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, I'm down. Right. But also, I know you say that your relevancy has died down, but you are still out there in the zeitgeist every day being yeah. attached to memes. <laughs> just, I mean, there's just so much content that exists. Uh, it's a gift that has kept on giving. Yeah. And people out there find photos and attach <laughs> it to, to situations and words that just match. It's just. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, like you. in the most humble way possible, I am like an icon. You know you what are. I mean? <laughs> you really are. I started YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, I started this whole thing. Like, I started it in like 2007 when no one was on. And I feel like I've been the one person that's been consistent this whole time. Like, who else? Maybe Philip DeFranco, but like, you know. I don't know who that is. Really? Never heard no of him. No way. Yeah. Win for He's, Trish. That's <laughs> me versus, do you know of, him? Of course okay. I do. And yeah. by the way, Phil DeFranco would see me out at like a concert or something. Everyone sees you apparently. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. you well, are I, that person. Yeah, by the way, no, he didn't say anything. And I, and oh. I wanted to say something to him, but he would look at me and they get like nervous a little bit. Like I would like, uh-huh. like I was like, He's he seems like such a nice guy. But I also think that he gets uncomfortable out in public, I'm assuming, yeah, just based yeah. on what I was able to watch. I don't know him, but uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely been been around a long time. But you're, you've been doing this 16 years. I met year 15. Wow. Yeah, yeah, 2008. Yeah. Yeah, that's what really? I said. How old were you? 14. <gasps> oh, God, I wish I had the internet at 14. If the internet was around no, when I was 14, don't. I feel like I could have had some pretty iconic moments at 14 <laughs> that should have been recorded. I would have loved it. <laughs> I don't wait till I was freaking 18. That's when like the internet started popping out. That's amazing. That's really good. Did you start on MySpace? Uh, I started, yeah, I had a MySpace. Photo did, bucket? On YouTube, <laughs> but then I started a radio show from my bedroom. There was like an online radio service that I started. What? Like. Did yeah, your parents know? Yeah, they would hear me, and then Aww. a lot of times, like my parent, my mom was the only one listening. <laughs> really? But that's cute. Sometimes. She's your number one fan. She's your first fan. Yeah. Where's she, your mom now? She is my first fan. Where's my, New Jersey? Should we call her? <gasps> New uh, Jersey. Whip. Are you from New Jersey? Yeah. What part? Owain. Oh my god. I love it. This Fallon's is Owain. What... Stacey's mom is from our town. And my chemical romance. My chemical romance from New Jersey as well. Yeah. Why don't you talk to Gerard about that? I know. You know what? It, it's so funny. <laughs> NewJersey.com did a whole story when Frank came on the show because they talked shit on the Jonas Brothers who are also from New Jersey. So oh. it was just a whole New Jersey fuck fest. Whoa. Nice. Yeah. That's your connection. That's how you get to Gerard. That is. Damn it. Uh, yeah, Frank is lives like a town over from me. Really? Yeah. Now, currently, or in New Jersey? In New Jersey. Where, but my parents still live there. I love him too. He's amazing. I love I love him. He's great. I have a Frank Iero shirt. I have like a lot of those shirts. You know, he had like his own merch and stuff like that. Yeah, and he had his own. He had a solo project doing his own thing. Yeah, God, it's so crazy, and it's crazy to see them get older. Not in a bad way, but it's crazy just to see people get older, right? You're just mm-hmm. like, wow. I mean, I'm getting older, but it's like I you was know what say, I mean. We're all in that together. Yeah, it's a weird thing to see. You're just like, damn. Then they were just like young kids, and now they're just like dads. Literally. Yeah, they pose their kids and stuff like that. I was like, wow, that's so crazy. And you, Trish, are a mom. Yeah, that should make you feel old. It's like, oh my god, Trisha. Well, actually, you know, the new generation's like, oh no, Trisha's old. She's like a mom. It makes sense, but like, because people called me mom and like mom and dad since I was like literally like twenty. You know, people are like you're my mom. I'm like, no. <laughs> but I guess I've always been old to people who are young. Like you, you were fourteen when you started, and when you were fourteen, I was freaking what nineteen or something. So I was probably old, like yeah. you know. Old. Because a fourteen year old looks at a nineteen year old and you're like, well, one, it's inappropriate, but two, it's just like, oh, you know, it's kind of like they're old. They're nineteen. They're so fucking old. Yeah, it's a big difference. I was intimidated by high school kids when I was like, in middle- I'm still intimidated by high school kids. I see high schoolers and I'm like, oh my god, they're well, so they're, intimidating. They are scary. They are. Mm-hmm. They're a scary bunch. Because they're just so like, they seem so tough. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see them, because we live near a high school, they just look. I look so scared. Like I went to KFC and these two teenage boys came up to me. And I was like. Ah! Like, I was so scared. Like, don't beat me up, please. Oh, my God. Don't make fun of me. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> oh, man. I just, they're, they're scary. You are genuinely one of my favorite people and hands down one of Thanks. our favorite guests of all time. Thanks for having me. I was surprised to come on. I'm surprised you asked me because I was like, I'm not doing anything. So I was like so shocked. Oh, I guess the Backstreet Boys canceled. You're like, will you come on? I was no, like, okay. Well, we had, so the Backstreet Boys canceled and we had this amazing Christmas setup and we were like, who the fuck, who the fuck are we going to get use this Christmas <laughs> set around? And <sighs> obviously you came to mind. It was, I, hey, listen, I'll take all the credit for that. I said, reach out to Trish. Really? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my God, you're the MVP of the show. It should I be Zach know. and Dan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate. It. I know I would. I would have come more festive, but the outfit didn't come in. I, you know, we were waiting for it. FedEx was delivering it by noon today, and we just couldn't wait any longer. I was a little late for that. I had a really great festive outfit for you guys, but you look. You, but you've done the job right. <sighs> Thanks. I you try to pull something together last minute. You channeled Amy Poehler today. You paid homage <laughs> to Mean Girls. Thanks. <laughs> and we thank you forever. Thank you. I could talk to you for hours, but I got yeah. the text that our cameras are dying. Oh my gosh, that's a sign. That's how, that's how you know we've been talking. I'll come back when I have to promote White Lotus and oh, Stranger Things Live. That's, <laughs> that's it, sister. Okay. Or when you win that lottery and you want to buy our show. Yeah, because you know what? Here's one thing. Here's a fact. Like in California, you have to say when whoever wins the lotto, they have to make it public. Like you can't be anonymous. A what? Oh, you yeah. would get ripped apart. If I you know. Won. So I'm gonna get all the security real quick. I'll be like, let me get some security. Like, but I would donate. I would be philanthropic with it. You know, I'm going to India. I'm doing all this stuff with it too. So I'm not gonna just like hoard it. I'm gonna like buy the house with the slides, do a Bollywood film, and donate the rest. I'm gonna do a tour that's gonna be free. I'm gonna shoot out money, like a hundred thousand dollars worth of like bills, and only invite like a hundred people so that they can all catch the money. That's like Mr. Beast type energy. I like that. Yeah, I never seen a Mr. Beast video, but I would like to be like that. Yeah, for sure. I think that would be that would be great. But the the catch is they have to sit through like an hour and a half of me performing. Like they have to watch the full show. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get it. <laughs> That's Mr. Beast. Whoever can last an hour and a half at a Trisha Paytas concert. <laughs> get on it, Mr. Beast. <laughs> That'd be great. You are an icon, thank Trisha you. Paytas. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, Malibu Barbie. <laughs> it was an honor to have her here for her first ever interview. She's sleeping. I mean, what a guest. Thank you. Thanks you're, for having us. You're an icon. Thank you. Trisha Paytas forever. <laughs> thank, you. Love you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you.